All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Outlast Season 2 cast assessment. Um, I have with me here a panel of LRG experts, most of which you will recognize from our season, our, our first season, Season 1 of Outlast, um, as well as the golden god of LRG content, Stephen Stewart, who runs LRG uh, the LRG casting LRG casting podcast. Stephen, what is it? Tell us about yourself. What what is that thing? Um, hi, my name is Stephen. I am one of the podcasters for the Live Rail Game Podcast. This past uh, six months, I've been doing a lot of deep dive interviews with uh, various hosts from games, and Justin was able to come on and talk with me some, and so that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so Stephen has played a bunch of games and um, manages that page and that podcast um, and a lot of the um, wikis for, uh, or the, the wiki for LRGs, right, Stephen, you kind of manage the overall thing and then some, I think, individual pages. So very involved um, and uh, I think has a lot of context uh, to offer us uh, with his commentary, which is great. Um, up next, we have, I'm going to bounce around. I'm not going to go in the order I see on my screen. Um, <clears throat> we've got fan favorite the legend, the queen, Jazzy Daniels with us. Jazzy, uh, tell us a What's little that? bit about your, your LRG experience. Um, I'm super excited to be here, first of all, because I love judging people. Um, so <laughs> I am very happy to be here. Um, I started as doing LRGs first. I never even knew there was a survivor community out here until a few years ago when I did surviving Maine randomly and then you kind of like reached out to me at some point and ended up doing Pandora orgs which was super fun which led me to Outlast season one and then last summer or this past summer I did can you survive kind of last minute so right. I've done a few things and I just did a um org with Carlos <laughs> oh. that he ran which was very interesting oh yeah he does I think he does like a one night mini right and it last to like three in the morning or something crazy it did and lizzie was there so that was fun <laughs> nice 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 uh up next uh our last remaining female identifying player from season one we have nicole nelson hello thanks hello. for having me i'm so excited to be here um i love the LRG community i actually had no idea it was a thing like two years ago i didn't even know the org community was a thing and I played an org called Voyage, which is premiering this Saturday. Y'all should watch it. Um, and I played that and I think I got like fifth place. And then I played two of Pandora's boxes. That was a lot of fun. And then Justin asked me to apply for this LRG. And I was like, what is an LRG? Um, and I did it. And I literally, it was like the best weekend of my life. Had so much fun. Everyone from the first season still talks to each other like weekly. Um, and yeah, I'm obsessed with it. Last summer I was going to play two other allergies, but I actually tore my hip. So I had a surgery, but I'm back and ready to go, baby. And so excited to judge all of y'all respectfully. Yes. Is that a quad ball injury? Was that what it was from? Yeah. So I play quad ball. It's a full contact sport. And yeah, I tore my hip from a mixture of like not stretching enough. Cause you have to do that when you're older and, uh, being tackled. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Wild. And uh, spoiler alert, for those of you who haven't watched season one, we also have our king, our champion from Outlast season one, uh, and a very close five, five uh, four, three vote, uh, which is still debated to this day. I was down in Florida uh, and German told me all the reasons why he should have won, but we have our winner here, it is Nick McGrail. I think he'll always say he should have <laughs> won, but I mean, I went away with a win, um, but anyways, uh, Nick here, um, Outlast was my first LRG I've ever played. I didn't even play an online game before. Obviously, I've watched Survivor for quite some time, um, but it was such an unreal experience. It's kind of surreal watching these players then kind of get back into there. Um, it's un like amazing that um, this estate brought you back and like it's it's kind of this like nostalgic to see them walk through those woods um be in that field but it's definitely a, it's definitely a cool kind of experience just to just like watch it back but obviously not be playing it um and like nicole said i am here to judge you all and to be honest i might say something that might piss you off but it's all out of love um but we can talk about it later yeah 
Yeah, yeah. I think that, that what's really great about our entire panel here today is that they've all experienced it. They've all been there. They've been the ones being judged, right? They've been the ones that get see those comments on YouTube as people judge them for their gameplay or, or non-gameplay. So um, I think it's all meant with respect and love and, and an understanding, right, that like we've all been there. So I'm super excited to have this group with us to talk through our season to cast. So a couple of things, kind of housekeeping things. One is uh, season two is just uh, episodes just started being released. Uh, we released one in December and the second one um, released last Sunday. <laughs> Timelines are all weird. Uh, the seventh, so that was episode two. So two episodes are out right now. Um, and we actually purposefully do the cast assessment after those first two episodes to give people an idea of the cast and the players. Um, it's really hard to kind of just go into a cast assessment, not really being able to see anything, see anything that they've done or kind of uh, any of their early thoughts going into the game. So we did this last season. It worked really well. Um, we got a little bit of flavor of each of the players before we did the assessment. I thought that worked well. So we're doing it again um, this year. So we hope that you will uh, check us out on YouTube and um, watch those episodes. And I'll kind of have a link here at the end for, for you um, to go check those out. Um, applications. Oop, hit the slide. Uh, applications for season three, which are this Jan, uh, this January, this July, uh, are now open. So they opened uh, on this past Sunday as well, and they're open until February seventeenth. Um, so come play. We would love, love, love for you to apply, um, and uh, yeah, come experience uh, the woods of Central Massachusetts uh, and play our crazy game. Um, I will say, as I think Nicole mentioned, right, this, we really try to create a community, create a family. I think, you know, while games can be hard and people can, you know, there's lying, backstabbing, sometimes hurt feelings, sometimes drama, whatever it might be, right? At the end of the day, I think um, it's been amazing to see the family that is built and to see the support from season one, players coming to uh, support the season two premiere and to reach out with feedback. Um, so we'd love for you to be a part of the family. So we hope that you will check us out on Facebook. I know we should get an Instagram. I'll do it, I promise, eventually. But for right now, reach out to us on Facebook um, to find that link. Um, and uh, we hope that you'll apply. And I will just say really quickly, we really encourage you to submit a video. Um, we're getting to the point now where we're getting enough applications that like videos really do matter and you can really differentiate yourself with a video. Um, and we do say that in the application that um, those who do submit a video will be prioritized. So keep that in mind um, when you apply. All right, a um, couple other just quick housekeeping things before we get jump in. Um, this is meant to kind of be fun and casual. If any of us need to step away to use the restroom or like let the mailman in or something, mailman in, I don't know what that was, but like let, uh, you know, let their dogs out or whatever it might be. Um, you might see people pop on and off the camera. That's totally cool and fine. Uh, meant to be kind of very chill. Um, and uh, I think those are all the big things for now. Um, so what we'll do is we'll basically everything is being done in alphabetical order. So we'll um, so there's no like spoilers and orders or anything like that that we've we will be discussing, folks. So we're going to start with our Nebi tribe. Um, this is our, our blue tribe, um, and we're going to just go through everybody alphabetically. Um, so does anybody have anything they want to say about the Nebi tribe as a whole before we start diving into specific players? No, Nick, yes. I mean, I'll say something. I think like just looking at this tribe overall, um, it's a vast variety of different gameplay. And I feel like there's definitely a lot of people that have strengths that have shown. It's definitely going to be, it's going to be neat to see how it plays out. Yeah, I agree. I think we have a lot of big personalities on this tribe. Um, and also, like, just looking at this tribe, they have a lot of, like, really strong people, but a lot of, like, really smart and strategic people as well. So I'm excited to see how they do in the physical challenges as well as the mental challenges as a tribe. Yeah, it's so interesting as kind of a producer and the kind of the part of the team that kind of puts these groups together, right? Um, our number one thing is if they're, we work very, very hard not to cast anybody with known relationships. So my biggest number one is like, they can't have played a game together before, right? Um, a live game, right? Orgs are kind of hard to manage and track, but live games can't have played them together before. And they can't be like related or like known good friends, right? Like that's 
the number one thing. But if there are some minor relationships, we do our best like to separate them at least on two different tribes. So that's the number one priority is at least separating them from the beginning. And a lot of these people we don't know, right? So we don't, you can judge a little bit by video and by the interview and by pictures, but like, we don't really know. And so it is really funny, like watching this tribe walk in on the first day, I'm like, they're huge. <laughs> there are so many like big physical people on this team, like tall and just a lot of them were very athletic, which, you know, you never know, like before you put a group together, like what the makeup's gonna be like, right? So that was really interesting um, to kind of see them all as a group together. Um, all right, so up first, again, alphabetical order, we have Amelia, who's 25 from New Hampshire. Uh, she's a dance instructor and she has played a live game before she played Surviving Maine uh, last season, season four. Who wants to kick us off with Amelia? I'll do something. I think in the what's in the box, the care in the box challenge, I think she had my favorite rendition of it. I know she doesn't win her round, but I think I liked most how she handled it in the round and that, and that that was a huge plus for me yeah that was super entertaining i somebody reached out to me it's like i could watch chelsea and amelia's back and forth like all day long like it was so funny um and especially for someone who from my perspective is a little more soft-spoken especially compared to, to the rest of those on our tribe like to see that little bit of sass and like fire come out during that was really fun for those of you that don't know uh, in episode two there's a challenge called carrot in a box it's a reward challenge where essentially you're trying to manipulate another person into telling you whether they have something in a box or not. Um, it's based on a UK game show. Um, so that's what we're referencing. But yeah, I, I love that interaction as well. Anybody else? Shout out to 603, New Hampshire. Um, no, she's definitely quiet. Um, I think it, like, it's definitely gonna be neat to see how Amelia plays the game. Um, a quiet person can go quite far, like very far. But when she was kind of saying how she would win was like controlling the vote. And I'm wondering like how such a quiet individual is gonna be able to navigate and like drive those votes forward. Um, but kudos for her picking the, the food um, from the jump when they did the bag toss. Um, but it was definitely a, Definitely a quiet contender here, so it's definitely going to be neat to see how far she goes. All right, anything else on Amelia? I feel like I wrote, so I did a lot of notes, and I did episode one and episode two, and my notes are pretty different for Amelia for both episodes, because first episode, I kind of was like, you know, is she going to be strong enough? Is she too quiet, or is she going to be a silent threat? And then when that carrot box thing happened i was like i love her and now she's like likable to me so i feel like i just needed to see a little bit more of her so like nick said i'm excited to see where her gameplay goes and i hope she stays under the radar and does some some sneaky shit so i'm excited to see her play totally agree with you jazzy the first episode i was like honestly i don't know how i feel about amelia i don't know if she's gonna make it past the first vote and then after seeing her in the carrot in the box i was like okay She's sassy, she's smart, and she may be small, but she's mighty. So yeah, I'm excited to see how she navigates this game. And one thing that we we don't see too much um, in the episodes, but um, one of the few kind of very minor connections in this cast is that Amelia is actually uh, the now wife, uh, um, at that time, girlfriend or fiance of Will Hermanot, who both helps us with our helped us with our graphics for our first season, but ha is also has played uh, games out there, um, both online and live games, and uh, had played. So her now husband, Will, um, played Survival Challenge with me and Rachel, Rachel, who is on this cast as well. So there's a light connection there and uh, Amelia did recognize that. And um, we'll see if that ends up playing a factor in the game. Hasn't so far in the episodes, but there's a little bit of a light, like, hey, you know someone I know kind of uh, connection there. Um, and also Andy is a producer of Survival Challenge. So she kind of lightly knows him as well through that connection as well. Um, yeah, I think from my perspective, I think she said something early in episode one about just being underestimated. I think, you know, everything you all just said, rightly kind of maybe underestimated her a little bit in that first episode. And then you start to see like where she's, where she's coming out. So, um, I liked that she, she is self-aware about that bit that she's often underestimated and can hopefully take advantage of that. 
All right. Next up is Bartley. Bartley is 36 from Iowa. Um, he is a development officer for a nonprofit and, or at least he was, I think he might've changed jobs actually since then, but, um, this is his first live game. Um, who wants to kick us off with Bartley? I love Bartley. He is my Midwest King. Um, he just has such good vibes. I feel like he is going to be able to navigate this game so well, both socially and strategically. You can see that when he is around, he just kind of is a magnet where people are drawn to him. They want to talk with him. He also has a really nice physique. Like I think he's going to do good in challenges. Um, in the first episode, I feel he's, like- Oh, he's going to love that you said that. <laughs> he looks great. Like, come on. Um, what else did I write? Yeah, he just seems like he's easy to talk to and smart. And it just seemed like the first episode, people were like always around him. Like they, he gives us this energy of like, I'm chill, I'm likable. So I think he'll be able to develop the connections and I'm excited to see what he does with those. So yeah, go Bartley. That's funny, he texted me after the, the last episode and he's like, my friends, I think someone on the Yellow Tribe called him like a blonde Jim Muscly guy or something like that. And he's like, my friends will not stop calling you that now. Um, so uh, that, that was funny. That was the, that was the scene where the, the, one of the Yellow Tribe was complaining about him, right? He's kind of like, kind of rubbing in the victory to his face, to their face. And I was like, and that, that makes me a little bit worried because even though he might do well in his tribe, he might be getting a target from the other tribe as a result. And so that may... Given that was left in the episode, that may be, we, that may bear fruit in the future. I don't know. I think it was I think it was Jacob that did that. Yeah, um, I'm talking about those five inch seams, Barley, <laughs> showing off those legs. You're like a gazelle running during that episode. It was kind of crazy. I mean, hopefully you have everything kind of tucked in up there, because if not, like something might pop out. Um, but I think Bartley, it's like kind of like Nicole said, it's like this kind of aura around him. He's likable, he's approachable, which could be beneficial in the end, but also could be detrimental, like you just said, Stephen. Like this could also just kind of bite him in the butt in the end. It's almost like you're kind of too approachable. Everyone's going to like you. You're going to have too many alliances. You're going to say so many things to people. So hopefully you can kind of navigate um, his personality and um, likeness, but keep rocking those five inch. <laughs> I love him. I met him at the premiere and he is exactly what you see on TV um, or on YouTube. I think like he wasn't in the episodes a ton. I feel like I'm like, was like hoping, hoping for something bitchy. Something like that. Something that he too nice, like, too charismatic. He wasn't uh, is is, is Jazzy cutting out for other folks? Jazz, you're cutting in a little bit and out for us. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Maybe if you want to try turning your camera off, that might help. And uh, then we can at least hear what you have to say. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Let's see oh. how it goes. What I'm saying is like, I love him. I met him at the premiere. He's super cute. I think he's a social chameleon. I want him to be bitchier and I like want to grab onto that and I want him to be sassy and I hope he turns into that. Um, but he is a really nice guy. So I'm not sure if he will, but he wasn't in, he didn't do a ton of stuff in the episodes. I was kind of happy for him that he didn't get the decision making um, thing challenge. I'm kind of glad that he went back with that three because it, I feel like it took a little bit of eyes off him because like you said, Stephen, it, it could be too much that people see how likable he is. So I thought that was kind of like went in his favor. Yeah, I'm curious, you know, all of you have played games, um, you know, and we we architect the game in ways to make these little groups happen in the beginning to try and force relationships to happen, right? So, but one of the things Bartley says in the beginning is like, we're in a predicament now, like the three of them, Meg, Tim and Bartley go back to camp by themselves. They're in a minority. Um, I'm curious <clears throat> thoughts uh, on kind of how you handle that situation. What do you do in that situation? Is it as big a deal as maybe Bartley thought it was? Nick, Nicole, Jazzy, Steven, who's got a thought on that? 
I mean, it seems like he's going to bust him. <laughs> I think that's his solution. I think it sounds like I, from our discussion, he'll probably be fine. And I don't think those initial groups will hold a lot of weight. But he was kind of noting that like Tim might be someone he can push on if he needs, the name needs to get thrown out. Yeah, I mean, good on him for recognizing um, that, you know, there could be a divide, but I kind of agree with Stephen where, like, those groups happened so early on. I don't think they talked much strategy in those groups, maybe, that we saw there were conversations we didn't see. Um, but, yes, you see in the second episode that he's like, Tim might be painting a target on his back. So, at least you could see Tim and see him as a bigger threat than Bartley. So, he's thinking about it for sure. I would say, like, yeah, he might think Tim is a threat, but watching him compete out there, like if you're watching your other castmates compete in those type of challenges or awards, and he's running around like he did, like that to me would be a threat right off the bat. Like, um, but yeah, I agree. Like Tim definitely gives that more kind of brawn kind of structure. So um, I think it definitely just depends on whether or not he continues that relationship that he built with those uh, the other two or if he kind of decides that maybe it's not his not his alliance um and kind of decides to then have those conversations uh well we can talk about this now or we can wait until we get to um rachel but uh we see a very small snippet at the end of episode two where bartley finds a clue snippet with rachel at the very end at the premiere so we see in the premiere when she drops it um and then <laughs> Bartley runs over to me and goes I found that with her <laughs> I was like yes I know <laughs> I know what's coming next so um we can we can wait until until then but um unless anybody has any thoughts on kind of Bartley's part of that but um maybe that's better to chat about when we get to Rachel um but uh I love that moment we we see more of it as we get into the next episode this Sunday so um hang on for that um all right that is Bartley. Uh, next, we have Hannah, who's 32 from Massachusetts. She's a software engineer and a dancer. Uh, so a little bit of everything. And this is her first LRG. Who wants to kick us off with Hannah? Hair and lashes. This is all <laughs> I'm going to like know about her. She said, I didn't learn how to make a fire. Neither did I. But she said, I made sure that I dyed my hair and I got my lash extensions. Um, I mean, I think Hannah can definitely compete. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what uh, she's able to kind of uh, bring out into the game. Um, but good on you for putting the canoeing kit higher up. Um, that definitely uh, helps out your tribe a lot more for sure. I love how she's at the decision booth and she's like, wait, do we need fire for this game? <laughs> I'm like, girl, what? Yes. Um, but, you know, she was like, I'm intuitive. Like, this has to go up higher on this. Um, yeah, I like I like Hannah. She seems like she can easily manipulate her social game, though I don't know how much further that's going to go from there. Um, we'll see. Yeah, good vibe so far from Hannah. But I don't know how well she'll maneuver from just her social game. I think one of the challenges of like your first game you play, it's so easy to get caught up in the moment and just like, oh my gosh, this is all new and I'm experiencing it the first time. And I think Hannah's likely going to have a fantastic experience just kind of going in and just enjoying it for what it is. But I think the challenge is not being caught up with that and being able to step back and have more respect of where the game is as a whole. So that, that's what I'm not sure how she'll do with that. Let me see if this will work. Am I cutting out as I talk? Oh, you look okay. good so far. Perfect. Um, I wrote a lot of stuff about Hannah and she, to me, gives off main character energy. I really love her storytelling. When she was reading the challenge paper or whatever it was that she was reading, it was like, oh, wow, she could be a like host of a show. Like she was right. nice. I liked her. Am I cutting out? No, no, you're not. I just uh, saying, don't give her my hosting job. That's all. I know, I know, but she she could do it on like live TV. She was just great. Um, I like the way that she stepped back from the challenge or just from and from the game. Every time you're hearing her like speak out her game, and I really like that because the way she's thinking has long game kind of feel to it. So I'm watching her. I got my eyes on her. 
Nice. Anything else? I think the one one thing that impressed me, right, um, in the brains brawn breakdown, right? Like she clearly steps up for the brawn challenge, which I think, you know, um, it's I I love when and ever female identifying players are like, fuck yeah, I'm a brawn. I'm gonna come kick ass with what people might think of like mostly dudes like Tim is gonna go do a brawn challenge, right? Like she's like, Yeah, I'm I'm in that, um, which I love that. I love that. And you, you hear a little that's part of what the little bickering was, I think, um, from the Poda tribe is I think some comment was made about how, oh, the yellow tribe must not think they're women or, you know, brawny or whatever. Um, you know, they had Kira there, which is great. And I, you know, it was only one more, one more female identifying player, but it was like, it became a thing. So I was impressed that, um, you know, Hannah and, and Rachel both, right. They stepped up, um, in that, and that because that can be intimidating i think um for anybody like i would i would never step up for a brawn challenge either um so i think um and that was interesting that when we decided to do that dynamic you know i, I was i was a little nervous or like are people going to send all their their men off to do the brawn challenge right and like what is that going to say about the politics of that tribe uh, so it was it was interesting i liked i liked the breakdown there and that she raised her hand for that um any other thoughts on hannah i mean hannah's super cute and i'm cheering for her so we'll see how she does excellent all right up next is jeff jeff is 29 from massachusetts he is a product manager he has played Millennium Park season two, and he's sexy and he knows it, according to his intro video. <laughs> Who wants to start us off with chat? All I can say is we got our Eric of season two, and he knows it. Um, yeah, we will see. He is, you know, very cocky. Obviously, he probably has done well in many things in his life um yeah he's athletic he has an idol which is great for him um but i don't know i see him as a threat he's short he's strong so let's see how he does with that rock he has the idol yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you for clarifying what you meant by rock <laughs> i love jeff he's funny i hope that i feel like that we have a bunch of one-liners coming our way this season i hope because he said some funny shit um i love that he took the idol of course like i'm like yes take that idol jeff like take it um one thing though he kept saying something about like yeah i'm telling people that i'm not good at balance but he killed that balance challenge with the ball and i'm like jeff don't use that you need to change <laughs> it up because you just proved that you're fucking kick ass at balance but jeff is a killer i like his personality i love his athletic ability i'd want to team up with him if i were um on his tribe i want to team up with him too jazzy um but I would say like a couple of things was okay speed. Like when he took off during that challenge, I was like, he was zooming. Um, and I don't know if we all caught that, but he definitely like copped a feel of Trey during that challenge. If anybody noticed that when they collided with each other, I was like, I see what you're doing. Um, but yeah, he's it hot. was in it's slow like, motion. It was. It was perfect. I don't think it was intentional. <laughs> Either way, if it was or was not, it was good. Good for TV. Um, but I mean, he's hot. Legs look great. Athletic. I mean, I don't know what else he can say besides he has to like figure out how to carry around that rock for the rest of the season, which is wild to me. Um, maybe put in your pants and just make it look bigger. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Good luck, Jeff. Hopefully you do well. Stephen, do you have any thoughts on Jeff? <laughs> no no Nothing pressure. Much to add. Nothing much to add. The fact that it sounds like people already suspect him as having gone something else in the opening reward challenge, and I don't think it's going to cause him much trouble early on, but you never know. This tribe's dynamics is a little bit more opaque. Yeah, I think, I think you know, it's interesting, though, Cole, that you draw a comparison to Eric. It's funny, they played Millennium Park 2 together. So um, so they know they know each other. Um, and uh, I think the, a good comparison, right? Uh, Jeff definitely gives us the gold uh, in confessionals, right? And he likes to kind of like, uh, you know, he's very, 
he's very intentional with what he says in confessionals. He likes making good TV, which is great. Um, I think for players like Jeff and Eric, right, you've got to figure out how do you mitigate your, your threat level, right? You're such an obvious physical threat, right? So like, what do you do to kind of lower that threat level? Um, so I think that, you know, that could be his biggest, his biggest challenge uh, in the game. Um, good stuff. All right. Up next is... Matthew, uh, just to be clear, we have two Matts on the cast. Um, so this is Matthew. We have Matt on the other tribe. Um, and that's how I'm dif differentiating. I think everyone calls everybody Matt. So it gets very confusing in the footage. But this is Matthew in my brain. Uh, he's 40 from Texas. He's an artistic director. He just played Surviving Bloomington season six, which just started airing. So go check that out as well. Um, I think it's Order and Chaos. It seems like a very entertaining season. So um, we love our sister uh games out there so make sure you go check that out um i think he also just recently played ascendants um uh which is another kind of different format of lrg he may have played more i feel like he's one of those that's making his rounds around the games um and he's lovingly known as daddy matt who wants to start us off <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go it. ahead. So I played with him in Saturn Bloomington. So That's I can't. Right. You're yeah. our resident Matthew expert. Yeah. So we both started on the Order Tribe with each other. And it's Matthew, despite being on the Order Tribe, has a lot of potential chaos in him. And I'm very, and I, I've heard story, I've, I've heard, I have expectations for him this season to see what he can do. And I think we saw a little bit of that when he's at that opening reward challenge. He's like, I want that individual advantage. And you can see him very torn of what he's going to take. And he sighs and he takes the, I think he takes the tribe advantage, I want to say. He takes the one that's good for the team. But you could you could tell it's staring at him. And then when he gets that scroll, he's like, I've always wanted the piece of parchment. You can just, I, I am very excited to see what he comes up with. And yeah. Yeah, and playing these two games back, almost basically back to back, right? I think you played in June. Is that right, Stephen? Was it June? And then we were in July, right? So, how much is his Bloomington experience going to influence how he plays um, at last? I think it'll be really interesting. Both your game was four days, and Bloomington was also four days. Bloomington had vote offs. I mean, Matt went to his first tribal council within like hour four of Bloomington. And so, I'll, I'll be curious to see how having a little bit more time to breathe will change things for him, especially in terms of building alliances. All right, let's take a pause. Let's look at this photo. I mean, look at this power stance, even the shorts, like he's, everyone's hitting on these seams this season <laughs> it is perfect. Um, I mean, he seems like he has similar characteristics to Bartley, like he's very fun. Like he does little high kicks here and there during some episodes. Um, but Justin, you nailed it. Daddy Matt, I think he's actually an actual dad as well. Um, but overall, daddy for sure. Um, but I think he, he made the right play taking the tribal advantage, I think, at this stage. Um, especially with Steven saying, like, he definitely has um, some chaotic behavior that he might be able to stir the pot here and there. But I think. Um, the start of it seems great for uh, Matthew, for sure. Yeah, I think it's really interesting because that tribal advantage certainly helps in that first immunity challenge, right? Like that, you know, it's interesting. Their last, the last ball that Nevi does, they don't even use the advantage. But for those first two, right, like that could have been the, the difference, right? So, um, you know, how much that weighs into the tribe, his kind of r ranking in the hierarchy because he made that selection, um, who knows? But uh, certainly making that decision to choose tribe over individual um, worked for that, at, at least. Talking about that one, did anybody notice when they did that, the full dangle of like, <laughs> basically the circle was almost on the ground? I was like, yeah. what, are, what are we doing here? <laughs> I put that clip in because I was like, how is that ever gonna work? And like, obviously, you know, there's a lot of editing, dangling. right? I think that's another disclaimer I probably should have said at the beginning, right? There's so much editing that obviously like I have some we as editors, right? We as storytellers have some uh, control over what you see and how you receive these characters and these players, right? So, like, um, I'm at, I'm to blame for some things if you receive them certain ways. Um, and so, little clips like that. There's so much that goes in the cutting room floor, but I just th I love that moment where they're like, who's I <laughs> to like drop the plate to the floor and think that they'd have like control over that. It was so funny to me. I was like, that's an interesting strategy to try. Um, but I, I, I mean, that challenge took a very long time. 
And so I think at that point you're trying anything, right? Let's just try any tactics um, to try and make this work because it was very, very challenging um, to, to get those balls. Definitely a different balls, balls, balls than season one, for sure. <laughs> Where was the running, Justin? Why did you take out the running? Trust me, there's plenty of running to come. We've become known as like the running LRG. Um, so uh, yeah, there's plenty of we I've been told I have to tone down the running for next season. So um, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think Matthew, like his energy and his application was just like off the charts. Like you can tell he loves this game. He has so much passion. He's such like a, just a dynamic character that he was like a must cast. And then I saw him on the Bloomington cast. And I was like, damn it. I wanted to have him first. Um, but we have him kind of simultaneously, so which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, he's, he, and he's been so like supportive uh, of the game um, since it's been over as well, um, which is, which is really lovely. Um, any other thoughts on Matt, Matthew, Matt? I, he just makes me smile. I like his stance. I like his seams, but I stare more at his smile and kind of like Bartley gives off that same energy. Like Nick said, um, he seemed a little hesitant, I would say like in the first couple episodes, but I don't know if that's editing or um, if that's part of his gameplay. So I'm interested to see where his game takes him. I've seen him around the community a little bit, but I've never played with him. So um, he's a face I definitely recognize and like seeing. Good stuff. So we'll see how Matt Matthew does. I love that. I'm just gonna say I love it. All right. Up next we have Meg, who's 54 from New York. Uh, she's an actor and she has played multiple games, uh, all based in New York. She's probably our most experienced LRG person from that regard. I think she's played the most amount of games. Um, and Meg's been on my radar for so long. Um, uh, I was really hoping to get her for season one, but it didn't work out, but we got her for season two, um, which I'm really, really excited about. Who wants to kick us off with Meg? I can start with Meg. Um, she definitely gives off actor vibes. So she, I, you can tell she's an actor. If she would have tried to say she was something else, I'd be like, no, she's an actor. Um, you can tell. I absolutely love like her arm movements. Like she's very... Um, I don't know, like emotive with her emotions. And so I like watching her and I absolutely loved her stance on the balls, balls, balls challenge. She killed that. Like they did so good because her, she was leading it. I give her all the credit. The other team helped. I mean, the other players helped too, but I just love that moment for her. So um, I like her so far. Yeah, I love Meg too. She is fun. She is social. She also feels like kind of a social chameleon. We'll see how that plays out. Um, but she has an idea of how she wants to portray, portray herself in this game and how she kind of wants her game to go. Um, she talks about how she wants to be, you know, with the tribe right now. Not a lot of independent decisions. And she seems like she's going to be under the radar for now. So I'm excited to see what she does with that and the alliances she makes. Oh, Meg. Yeah, I agree. And I think like she, as of so far, it looks like she can analyze any player out there. Like she can sit there and like pick them apart, but obviously not vocally. Like she'll just sit there and it'll all come into her and be like, okay, that's not a person I'm going to work with or so be it. But yeah, it's definitely neat to see how uh, this, this game plays out for Meg. Um, I thought from the editing side of things, I felt like she was talking a little too much from my perspective. Um, like she saw obviously the blue tape and obviously wanted to stir the pot of that and like wanted to get the tribe a little more agitated with the three of them back at camp. But um, no, definitely I, I agree with you at uh, Jazzy. It's very just like everything is like here, like very like when she speaks, it's it's a lot of movement. Um, she's definitely she could be a flight attendant though. You know, we're not like it, it could be either way. She's very expressive. It's it's true. Uh, it's true. Um, shout out to Detective Daniel from season one who tried to solve the mystery of the tape. We'll see if Meg uh, has any better luck with it than uh, Detective Daniel did. Stephen, any thoughts on Meg? Do you know Meg from the? Have you you haven't played with Meg before, right? I've not played with Meg. Um, I, I've seen I have, she's in the one star of New York season that hasn't aired yet, so I'm like haven't seen her play yet. But I've liked her every time she's been on camera. I've, I'm rooting for her, and I. 
But I like the fact she found the tape. I was like, okay, that's really astute. She she's keeping her eye on things. Yeah, yeah, she's certainly observant, which I which I liked. Um, I liked about that uh, about her. Um, and another shout out to our 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 most senior, our oldest player uh, in the game, being a, a female identifying player once again. Um, we're loving our badass uh, older players. We hope to see more of them in the future. And by older, I just mean anybody that's older than 30. <laughs> There's so many people in this community that are like 30 and under. I, I love to see people like Oh over no, 30. I'm an older player now. You're an old player now, Stephen. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Um, Daddy Stephen. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope and hope to see more and more um, people 30, 40s, 50s, even 60s, 70s, whatever, whatever age um, playing these games. Because I think there, there's certainly room and opportunity um so uh keep those apps coming in um all right that's on meg all right up next we have peter 23 from massachusetts he's a technical writer and this is his first lrg nicole tell me what that face is about whoa this man is only 23 i'm sorry i'm shook i'm so <laughs> shook by that um wow okay so I don't know. I like Peter. He says he's like strong and strategic and he's going to like really put his foot on the gas at the end. So we'll see how that plays out. I like him so far. He's funny. He's likable. He seems like he's analyzing players. So I don't know. He could, he's kind of in the background right now. He could be like a dark horse, maybe underestimated, but he also could be someone that's voted up pretty early. So I don't really know about Peter yet. But yeah, I'm shook that he's 23, but I like him so far. Justin, question for you. How yeah. tall is Peter and who's taller, Peter or Tim? Uh, that's a great question. I want to say Peter is like 6'4". Sorry, Peter, don't be mad at me if that's wrong. Um, <laughs> I can probably look at his application really quickly, but I don't know how to do that without breaking the slideshow. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I do think he mentions it. I want to say it's 6'4". It might be closer to 6'6". Six, six. It's somewhere in that range, I'm pretty sure. I think he's a little taller than Tim. I'm pretty sure of that. Well, Wait, anyone who's taller than me, I root for. So therefore, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm ready, ready to really go far. Let's sit back. He's slightly taller, right? Well, I mean, it looks, it looks like Tim's hunching a bit. We're, I don't know. we're leaning. We don't really know. Um, but yeah, that's uh, he's in that that range. He was the one I was most surprised by, which I know he says it in his application, and I still wouldn't got there. I was like, oh my gosh, you're, you're, that's what that looks like in real life. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, any other thoughts on Peter? I actually, I'm curious. So um, another favorite moment of mine, episode two, uh, is his little banter with Stephanie during uh, Care in the Box. Um, they kind of bond over Taylor Swift because Stephanie doesn't want to, say anything about her box situation um so i'm just curious like how much those like little moments where you bond over people like is that do you see that as a strategic thing or just like something funny that happened right like do you do you, you know i mean I, I think you might have captured it in jazzy i don't know if you recall our season but we were blindfolded and we were just talking about beyonce yeah um I think it's definitely it's going to be unique to see if they can get to a merge or a swap. Um, I think that moment definitely can click with a lot of people. I think anytime you're out there and you're just like obviously by yourself, but any type of anything that happens in your real life can come into this these games. Like it, it definitely like soft spot, right? Um, but I think it'd be great to hear uh, what is everyone's era right now on this on this little panel. I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not much of a Swifty. Um, so I don't really know. But I'll just like, you know, I'll just say uh, evermore. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm very folklore right now. You know, very just like, it's very moody here. We haven't seen the sun in 12 days. Yeah, very folklore. Full on reputation is right now. That's everyone's says that's what everyone says. So that's why I didn't want to say that one. So I just said a random album that I knew the name yeah, of. Yeah, but you should be in <laughs> reputation as well. We okay, all, all right. Steven, do you have a do you have an era? Uh this is even worse because I don't think I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
You could be all the eras. You can be on the eras tour or something. What, whatever, whatever <laughs> album has Hey Steven, that's that's the era I'm in. Oh, okay. Jazz, I'm in the red. Heard... Sorry, I just jumped over it. What'd you say? I'm in the red era. Red era? Yeah. That was the other one I was deciding between. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know enough about the albums to know, but um good to know. Yeah, we'll see if that uh if and if that impacts later yet did you jazzy and nick did you ever did you talk about beyonce once you swapped it together like did that you rekindle anything from that moment i think it left like i think it happened organically because both of us have that kind of personality but i think it did open up a door for us when we were on a swap tribe together cool i mean we definitely spoke when we swapped for sure we and did <laughs> we couldn't make something happen unfortunately um all right i i didn't say anything about peter and i do i really like peter i'm kind of shook that he's 23 too because i wrote he has like talk nerdy to me energy like he's got a nerdy sexiness and i didn't realize he was so young um so sorry about that peter um but i like I like his approach. He he's might be tall and he might be the tallest, but he doesn't come off as like the most athletic or most like, you know, powerful person. And I, I like that in an ally. So if I were on his tribe, I, I kind of like that type of an ally. So I think he may go far and I've got hopes for him. All right. Any other thoughts on Peter before we move on? Great. Next up is Rachel. Rachel's 26 from Massachusetts. Uh, she works for the Special Olympics and she played Survival Challenge season seven with me. Um, so I've played with Rachel. Um, she was my downfall maybe. I don't know about that. No, my own allies were my downfall, but um, <laughs> Rachel was my target at the time I was, I was on the way out. Um, so thoughts on Rachel. We see her opening moments. Let's start with you, Nick. Opening moments, she gets that clue. Same thing Nick did, day one, minute one. Um, is that is that good? Is it bad? What what do you, what were your thoughts on that? Well, damn, she did better than I did. Um, no, I think it's it's she did it very slyly. I think obviously she did the same way I did. She should have just ripped the whole tape off. But um, all I can like right now for Rachel and it's unfortunate, like it's Beyonce, but it's like eat it, eat it, eat it. Like that's a, like all she's just like eating that. I'm like, good for you. You've probably kept that in your pocket. You don't know when you're going to eat again. Like, you should have just taken another slice off of that and had a little snack. Um, but first of the clue box, obviously left the tape. In her um, video, she says she's awesome. I think she brings off that type of vibe, just like a very chill individual, um, very athletic. Um, but yeah, I mean, she has the idol. So that's, that's, and in early um so that's definitely a game changer for sure um i mean i didn't get my idol till way late in the game so i can't say for much um you needed it but right? <laughs> when you need it you have it um but yeah i think like she put herself in the in a great spot um during that challenge at the end money with the buckets um and the balls at the end so uh good for her um i think i think that it's bright, but I'm a little nervous. Like, I feel like she's done enough to be like at the top, but like, did she do a little too much to then have a target on her back? Did she get the Gatorade in that opening challenge? Yeah, so it's interesting. She goes in first into that and decides to choose the like least controversial thing and put it in the last spot she could put it in, right? So she didn't take the like a tarp or flint or any of the important things and put it in one. She chose probably the least consequential thing and put it in the last slot, which was really interesting um, as a strategy. Um, and she says it, she's like, everyone behind me is going to know that I, whatever I do, right? They're going to, they're not going to know what it is, but they're going to know what I didn't do because it's all still going to be on the table. Right. So um, it was a really interesting approach um, to do that so I was, you know when we put these things together we never really know how it's going to go and you'd assume that first person they're going to go for something big either a big tribe thing or a big like idol thing right like in theory that first person could take the idol put it in number one spot 
and no one else will have known that there was even an idol there as an option, right? So, and neither of our groups did that, which was interesting. Um, and maybe she, maybe she was okay just playing it really cautiously because she already has something in her pocket. She, she's probably right. read at this point, so she knows she has something no one else does, but she really needs something else on top of that. And so it's probably judicious that she does play like ultra cautious in that sense. That's a good point, but I was like like throwing things at my screen like what take the idol you're first like nobody's gonna see that what are you doing i pretty much was screaming that at everyone that didn't take the idol because i totally would have taken the idol um but i also didn't make it very far in ella so shouldn't listen to me but i she i wrote down for her says she's awesome we'll see and then later after she pulled off some of these sneaky things and then that final scene with Bartley, I was like, okay, she's awesome. I really like her um, and she's super athletic. So I think she's super promising and I'm excited to see more awesome from her. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I go ahead, Steven or Nick was, or whoever. Was that remaining piece of paper she left on the ground on purpose just to throw someone off scene or she just was eating it so fast a piece slipped out? I, I, I don't I, know. So I'll, I haven't heard like the final, so Rachel doesn't realize she dropped it. Um, so it was a part of, I think maybe the tearing that she did before she ate it, that she dropped the piece. So she didn't realize she dropped it. Um, and it was funny because at some point, I think it was maybe walking back from dropping off what they got in the opening. So dropping off the tarp and the stuff, I walk, was walking back and I saw it on the ground and I went to pick it up and I was like, I can't do that. Like I would, that breaks the game, right? That that needs to stay there. And so if some case someone finds it, thank God I didn't touch it. Um, I just took a video of it. So we had it later for down the road, which thank God I have that. Um, but I went to pick it up and I was like, oh my God, I almost just like, this. it's so terrifying to like impact the game in any way because who knows what that could do. Um, and when you see it's now, Rachel has to come up with a story and she's pushing it immediately on Sarah who had that first journey opportunity, right? Um, which is smart, but my favorite part of that clip, and obviously like as an editor, I zoomed in on it, like her face as Bartley's talking about it. It's just like, it is perfection of just like, like kind of guilty, but like trying not to be guilty and like, or maybe, it would, I mean, if she didn't realize she dropped it, she could have thought someone else genuinely did drop it. And she was just, you know, trying to to uh, come up with a an interesting story. I don't know, I haven't talked to her and, and you know, we, at some point, you know, if and when she ever does a round table, um, so I don't spoil anything, um, uh, we can ask her that question, like, did she realize she dropped it? Um, you know, did it ever cross her mind that that was her piece and she had to kind of cover it or not? Um, we haven't officially talked about it. But love that scene. Uh, um, and uh, it's, it's fun to see that how it plays out down the road. Thank you. Um, and like I mentioned before, Rachel played Survival Challenge, so she has a very light, uh, <laughs> kind of connection with Andy, who's a producer on Survival Challenge. Um, you know, that was one of those things where like, it, it had been some years and I was curious if Rachel would even recognize Andy or not. Um, if you ever watch our season of Survival Challenge, she has a <laughs> she has a very hard time with memory and names. And so I was like, she probably would, the whole casting team was like, she probably won't even recognize it, who Andy is. But she did recognize him. She did tell me she did realize um, that she knew of him. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, that's anything else on Rachel? Everybody, everybody. Oh, Nicole. I just wanted, yes, yes. I I'm obsessed with Rachel. Um, I'm she is promising, right? Like you can tell she's so tall. She's so athletic. Um, was she a college athlete or something? Like this girl's insane. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure. Okay. I, I don't know for sure, but I'm. I mean, I would so guess. I'm interesting how she's going to mitigate her threat level um, because she is probably the most competitive um, female identifying player and probably one of the most competitive players out there. She's so sneaky, she's so sly, and what I'm seeing so far, she's smart. Um, so I'm just really excited for Rachel. Yeah, like Jazzy said, she's really promising and my gut tells me she goes far, um, but it all just depends who she surrounds herself with. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Before we move on from Rachel, I do wanna ask Jazzy, so how do you feel about her picking Gatorade? <laughs> I laughed at the Gatorade. I was like, good one. She saw first the first season. She knows how controversial Gatorade can be. But I'm sure she didn't. But it was funny for me and you, obviously. <laughs> What's the Gatorade story? You got to tell it now. What's the deal? 
gate gatorade gate yeah it's too, it's too long of a story but essentially it's me and john's beef let's just say oh. that <laughs> it's me and john beefing over gatorade <laughs> all right <laughs> enough said enough said all right uh up next we have sarah Sarah's 32 from Massachusetts. She's a therapist, but was going to tell people she works for a um, uh, dispensary, um, which I think she also does part-time. Um, so focusing on that. And then she has played Real Foot. We actually played together in Real Foot. Um, we're aligned for most of the game. Uh, and then she just recently played, or not recently, she played last year of Can You Survive, which I believe is season two. I hope I got that right. Um, I think got pretty far. So I think she was fifth or fourth. Can you survive? I can't quite remember. Um, um, I think it was fifth and fourth. She says that in her, I think, in her, one of her videos. Um, so um, that is Sarah. Who wants to start us off with Sarah? I'll start us off. I mean, I was, I guess I've done like an hour and a half and she was Sarah following her real foot game. Sarah oh. is impressive. She brings everything to the table. And I think... Given her past record, I see her going deep in this as well. She is, just a, I mean, just you can back me up or correct me if I'm wrong. I think she's a really adept social player, really mm -hmm. good at meeting people, and really good at, I don't know, being really analytical and in, in, in with the situation as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we connected very quickly at Real Foot, both being from Massachusetts, um, so that was something that we bonded over pretty early, and it was one of those just like, we kind of knew we had each other's back and. Uh, had I not made an earlier alliance with Shane like seconds into the game, Sarah probably would have been my number one. Um, so that was a really hard kind of, once we got down to it, um, making that choice between the two of them um, was really, really challenging. So, um, uh, but yeah, she's 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 very good socially, very, um, at least from my experience, right? And I think we're seeing, um, early scenes of, um, you know, her starting to get blamed for <laughs> some things early on. So I wonder how she's, if, if and how she'll be able to recover from that, um, using that, some of those social skills. Anybody else? Who else? I, I thought Sarah, like when she got to kind of like the decision of the um, six different boxes, I mean, she analyzes Andy like, Unreal. Straight up. Like, yeah. Straight up just goes, and he's getting that. Yeah. And then in my mind, I'm like, I feel like Sarah's such a strong player that, and maybe it's just me, but like w for her to get further in the game, she's going to need something short to get rid of some players like that are going to target her. I don't know if that's how I would play. I have no idea. I've never seen that box before in my life. So I can't say I would do one thing or the other. Um, there is just one thing I need to tell Sarah um, during the balls, balls, balls. She says, um, that's a lot of balls. And there is no such thing as so many balls. Like, it should just always be that way. So um, kudos oh. to you. Keep it rolling. Um, I think you're a great player. But it's definitely going to be, you seem like you're going to control a lot. So hopefully you can kind of keep that under wraps um, and kind of continue your game um, all the way to the end. So I'm curious, I'll come to you again, Nick, um, real quickly. Uh, so she loses her vote, right? We see that. Um, and you worked, obviously your closest ally, German, didn't have a vote for that first tribal um, based on the boxes. How much do you think, I mean, it wasn't you directly, but someone you were working very closely with, how much does could that impact the game? And, and you know, you're probably the closest person to kind of talk through the strategy of what to do in that situation. Yeah, I mean, obviously he lost it. So she's got a link with somebody and i haven't seen obviously in these episodes i don't know who um, her alliance is with and that's the only person you can say like you can only tell that individual yes this is happening and if that's going to be your person that you're going to take for a little while then you're going to have to protect them she's got to trust somebody if she doesn't trust somebody and get an alliance with or leaks out that she lost a vote like and said all the things that she said during kind of when they kind of reconvene as a tribe after the whole situation i think a target could be on her back right away yeah it's interesting right because she tells everybody it was an empty box so if anybody else goes there 
reads the opportunity, right? And it says, if it's an empty box, you lose your vote. There could be an assumption she doesn't have a vote, right? So it's interesting that for me, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, if and how that plays out. Um, if people will kind of make that connection, of like, oh, she said she had an empty box. Um, so that must mean X or she's lying, right? And and covering up that she got something. Um, Better than what Andy said. <laughs> we'll get there for sure. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. any, any other thoughts on Sarah? I like her in a very devious Mr. Burns kind of way. Um, she seems crafty. She seems secretive, but she seems really smart and really powerful. I agree with what, I don't know if it was you or um, Steven or you, Nick, that said that she needs to kind of keep that under wraps. I can already see it, but I feel like I've already met her. And so I've kind of saw that in person and just seeing it from the outside. So I'm not sure how people are seeing her in the game yet, because we haven't seen a lot of those type of confessionals, but um, I like her. She seems sneaky. Right up Jazzy's alley with the sneakiness. And I remember when she came back and she was like, I mean, if you want to read it, you can read it. I was like, okay, sounds good. <laughs> and she was like, you can pat me down if you want. I have nothing. I was like, okay, girl. Yeah, she's smart. Yeah, she's been through this before. You know, that's what I was seeing from that. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, on the Nebby tribe, we have Timothy um, from, he's 29 from Massachusetts. He's a software engineer, um, also a, like a, I think, a competitive power lifter and a Dungeons and Dragons master. Like he's a, got a wide variety of hobbies and interests. Um, and this is his first LRG. Um, and one thing that I did not know until way later is that Timothy actually met Val at some party where they both knew people at the same that in the same way. And so they did meet prior to this game, which I did not know until they were in the game. Um, or it was maybe just before. Um, uh, I think I found out maybe the week of the game or something like that. Um, so uh, again, light, lightly. I don't think they talked about the game together. At least I don't... I, wasn't told that. Um, I don't think they knew the other person was cast, but they at least hadn't met prior to the game, which of course made me very angry. Um, but you know, that's what happens in life. Um, thoughts on Tim. Yo, hey. why is this man lifting this box by himself? Like, are you are you just like trying to be a threat right off the bat? Like, are you just leaning into it? I just don't get he's like, I bought this by myself. Like, you know, like come on, man. Like, at least act like this is gassing you out a little bit. Um I don't know. Tim is, he's funny, I guess, or Timothy is funny. Um, but I'm worried. He is such a big threat. Like he is a big dude. And, you know, you hear Bartley already called him out for being kind of on the outs. Um, he does have kind of a unique personality. Like I love myself, some nerdy people. Um, but I'm interested to see how he's going to integrate himself in his tribe. Does he have an alliance at all? Is he getting close with anyone? But I don't know if I went to a first tribal, I'd be like, let's just get this guy out, you know? So Godspeed for Tim. Imagine playing tug of war against this human. Like I would just let go of the rope and say, take it. Um, but yeah, you're right. I think it's like the muscles. It's, I mean, obviously from his video, he does everything like this. He's a jack of all trades. So obviously he has enough in his repertoire to like go far. But I'm hopefully he doesn't like just build off of that kind of like I'm a muscly dude. Like I'll, do, I'll stay around camp. I'll chop down trees for you if you need it. Um, he does say hard a lot during a lot of his like just anytime he speaks, which I'm just like, that might be a throw off for me. I don't know about anybody else, but like even just like, damn, that was really hard. Oh, this is really hard. Oh, but like nothing's hard for you, bro. Like look at your muscles. Well, you we pick up me, Jazzy, Nicole, Justin, and Steven and go on a hike with us. Like we would have a grand old time on your back. What's interesting though, right, is that that up and down reward challenge, he gets gassed out, right? Like he does talk about how he's not really a runner. And I think one thing that I <laughs> one thing I really enjoyed was like at one point you see him just kind of laying on the ground, just try, like trying to like regroup, right? And so like even some of these bigger people, like they you find a challenge or a or a skill that like you know, doesn't necessarily warrant itself to these bigger kind of muscly guys, right? So, you know, it 
could that kind of take his threat level down a little bit because like people think I could beat him in a foot race, right? Like he's definitely stronger than me, but I'm probably going to be faster than him. Or maybe there's more endurance, right? Whatever that might be um, from a speed perspective. So um, I think it was interesting to kind of, kind of the big guy and, you know, when you go into a brawn challenge and it's kind of like, well, it's not really brawn, it's running. Good luck. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, womp womp. <laughs> I want a tug of war, right? Or I wanted like to pick things up and put them down, but instead I made them run. It's great. Didn't you say like in the thing it was like brawn and endurance? It's, it was, yeah, brawn and stamina were kind of the, the two qualities of the more physical challenge. Yeah, which I think confused some people, right? But, um, you know, we were trying to get clever with the clue to kind of be like, one's going to be physical, one's going to be mental. Like, you know, um, and physical doesn't necessarily mean just like strong strength, right? It, it's also speed and kind of stamina of keeping that speed up as long as you can. Any other thoughts on Tim? I wrote <laughs> stylish athleticism. It, <laughs> it makes me laugh because I was like wine induced watching these last night. But <laughs> like... I think what I mean by that, honestly, is that, yes, he he's very brawny. He looks brawny, but he really is a brain deep down. And it's more like, I think who he really is, is like a nerd and not really a brawny guy, but he became a brawny guy. So I, I don't think he's super athletic per se. I think he's just strong. And I think that that's okay, but he should play that up so people don't think he's just this uber athletic guy, maybe. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on Tim, Timothy? Cool. All right. So that is our Nebby tribe. Um, any final thoughts on Nebby? No. All right. I'm just gonna quick around the room. If you had to pick a favorite from Nebby right now, who's who's who? Who do you have your eyes on the most? All right. We'll start with Steven. I was figuring out um person I have eyes on the most biased. I'm following Matthew, but also I think I'm very interested in seeing Sarah work her magic. All right. I said one, but Steven cheated and did two. All right. Perfect. Nick. Oof. Justin, this is tough. I mean, kudos to the guys from season one, but season two is bringing heat with all of these hot men that I want to cuddle with. Um, gosh. I think like my dark horse in this is has to be Hannah. I think Hannah's got to be my dark horse. Um, but I definitely want to see how Jeff goes. Obviously, definitely looks like an Eric ish from season one, but there's definitely an Eric on the other team that, or the other trap that we can definitely uh, keep our eyes out for. All right, Jazzy. <laughs> It, this is hard. Favorite from just like watching and who yeah. I want to watch is really different than who I would want to play with. But if I'm just purely doing it off just who I want to watch as a fan, oh gosh, I'm going Bartley. He's my favorite to watch right now. All right. And Nicole? Wait, are we going for like who we want to watch or who do we think is going to do really well? We're going to just like who's your favorite? We'll talk about winner picks. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, every so many people seem like they're so fun to watch. Um, I'm gonna go for Matt because I think he's gonna be chaotic and fun. So Matt is who I'm really excited to watch. He'll love that you said that. <laughs> um, awesome. Awesome. All right. Here we have our Poda tribe. Um, so we'll kind of just run the same thing. Any any initial thoughts on Poda as a group before we get into uh, the breakdown. Before we talk about our <laughs> gosh, we're all going in. I do have a question, Justin. So it seems like Nebby, they are all wearing like a shade of blue. Like yeah. all of them were like, and now we're getting to Poda and it's just like, yeah, yellow? yeah. This was a little confusing. So I, in our initial like outreach to the groups, um, when we gave them their packing list, we did say for Nebby, try to wear something blue for Poto, try to wear something yellow. Yellow is a hard color. It's a hard color to ask anybody to wear. Um, and so I basically said like anything, I basically said, you don't have to, it's not required, but it'd be nice if you did. And Nebby, like everybody was in and on Poto, we had a little bit more of a smattering of like in and out. Um, and others reached out to be like, 
if I don't have yellow, what can I wear? And it says maybe something warmer, like oranges or reds, like that kind of stuff, kind of stay away from any cold colors. Um, and so we got a little bit of a smattering, but at the end of the day, I was like, if you don't have anything, don't stress. Like you're gonna get a buff, we'll know what tribe you're on. So I think POTA, which is interesting from a, just like, as we think about dynamics as a whole, like everybody on Nebi bought in and everybody on POTA is a little bit more like, I don't wanna say chaotic, right? But there's a little bit more of like, kind of misalignment necessarily, right? Which is an interesting kind of thing when you think about where the story is right now, where we are with POTA. Um, so that that's kind of that. And even they were confused, right? Cause I think, um initially they're like yeah i guess we're on the same tribe even though we're not wearing the same colors so um you know no shade no no issues i certainly don't want anyone to, have to go out and buy clothing to like come play in our game but um uh yeah that was kind of the the explanation of that the campsites look awesome by the way good yeah we did um shout out to bobby and obviously the hunter family for the property again um Bobby did a ton of work to kind of go in and relocate the camps a little bit, make them a little bit bigger. Um, we've now added, you know, the water water well or the water cooler um, to give more opportunity to for people to kind of get away from camp and have a reason to. Um, so a lot of work has gone into that um, to, you know, try to make it better every season. Um, but yeah, it's interesting, as I said before, right? we don't really know these people well enough to kind of know how they're going to stack up. So we had Nebby standing on the challenge field and we see Poda walk in and just like overall size and height wise, it was just such a different a dichotomy, right? It was just so interesting to see the two kind of stacked up next to each other. Um, and, you know, that's, it's, it's kind of a crap shoot on how that's going to go. And, you know, size isn't, isn't everything. Um, so like, you know, you know, there's, there's, I think we see that the challenges are still very competitive and close, even with kind of that, size disparity um so it was interesting to kind of see the dynamic of those those two things any other group thoughts nope cool 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 jump in with our first player on poda is alex 41 from massachusetts he's a former uh formerly was in the services i, I want to say the military uh i don't know what branch i'm so sorry alex i should know this um but now works in cybersecurity. um and this is his first live game. And out of everybody, I'll just give the context. He's probably has the least amount of Survivor knowledge. Doesn't watch Survivor. Um, he's kind of a, a friend of a good friend of mine. A, a friend. He's the husband of a good friend of mine um, who saw what we did in the first season. Was kind of interested and intrigued. And as he said, he likes Type Two fun. He likes kind of adventures and trying new things and doing lots of different stuff. So um, applied. And you know me, I always love the. Uh, <laughs> I always love uh bringing people into the lrg community that haven't haven't played before thoughts on alex i mean i'll kick it off might as well i had to google what type 2 fun was i obviously i'm not that smart i guess um but spot on adventure is amazing um he currently is known as the bug spray sunscreen daddy for me like he collected that when they're walking to that next thing um still a daddy for sure it doesn't matter about the bug scream or whatever um I, like he's athletic he can get things done to me was like didn't really stand out for me as much as like i'm not threat he's not a threat right now in my perspective maybe i'm indifferent from everyone else but all i want to know is does he have more tattoos and does he end up taking off that long sleeve that's all I'm looking for. Um, I know it gets hotter and then more rain, more bugs, but just waiting. Can someone explain type two fun? Because I honestly thought he had diabetes <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> so type two fun is basically like you're putting, you're torturing yourself. But at the end of the day, you look back on it like that was a fun adventure, right? Like I've done tough mutters and I hate it in the moment. But after I look back and I'm like, that was, I'm glad I did it. I accomplished it. It was good to look back on. Overall, it was a great experience. But like maybe it's not so fun in the moment. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I, he seems cool. He seems athletic. I am also met him and his wife at the premiere. They were super nice. Um, he just, he seems like somebody that will go far because he's going to be like helpful in challenges on his tribe. Um, 
so but i haven't seen him making relationships yet so that more to come on him i like his confessionals i think he does a really good job analyzing breaking down what he sees and what's going on around him and i think you can definitely tell that with his background and both cyber security and the military that that kind of leads into it and so i think he's <laughs> I see him being a, a tar target of other tribe in a swap situation. Unfortunately, that like I think I don't think he's going anywhere in this original tribe. I think a swap or early merge is going to be really challenging for him. Yeah, I was, I, you know, to your point, Stephen. I think uh, Stephen. I think he's really articulate. And actually, one thing that surprised me, given his lack of survivor knowledge and experience, is like just how articulate he was in his confessionals. He's one of our best kind of narrators um, of kind of what's going on and how things are happening in the game, um, or you know, and challenges or whatever. So that was really, it was nice to see that he, you know, he um, he kind of knew without knowing like what to say in confessionals and um maybe not as spicy as jazzy or some eric's or some others out there in, in confessionals but um a good a good narrator for us a good storyteller nicole do you have anything i was just gonna note that he has quoted or talked about season one a couple of times so he may not have watched survivor but he definitely studied up on season one of outlast which i find interesting i think he was the one that said oh well, you know, in the first season they had, you know, 12 or, you know, three boxes for the Outlast challenge or something like that. But he definitely studied up on it. Um, he's not given me too much, but you can tell he analyzes a lot. So I agree with Steven. We'll see how far he goes. I don't think he's going to be a huge threat on his tribe, but yeah, he's cool. Great. All right. All right. Up next is Andy. Lots of Andy things uh, to talk about in these first couple of episodes. He's certainly making a, an early impression. Uh, Andy is 52 from Connecticut. He's a screenwriter. Um, he played Survival Challenge in season two. I want to say it was almost 10 years ago. Andy, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think it was quite a while ago. And he hadn't played a game since uh, until this past summer where he played Can You Survive the Mountain? which I think I want to say was a week or maybe two weeks before Outlast. Like it was basically back to back, um, which he did say was pretty brutal. Um, uh, and one of the connections that I did not know about, which annoyed the crap out of me, was uh, that at Can You Survive, because Sarah had done the year before, she was there to help and volunteer. And so they kind of knew of each other from that, which we kind of see play out on this first journey, right? Like, could that have been a factor in Andy getting selected because Sarah had an influence out of it? Those are the little things that annoy me, but not a lot I can do to control that. Um, so that is Andy's history. So, so far we've seen um, him, tried. he tried for the idol in the opening uh, session. Uh, he's been on the journey and he now has a legacy advantage um, and he's, spin a lot of stories up with his tribe about what's what's actually happening on those things. So what are your thoughts on Andy? Andy has a lot of potential. I'm very excited for him. I mean, he had a great lie right off the bat about the granola. I thought that was great. He was like, yeah, I picked granola. I mean, that's something I didn't think anyone was going to pick. And so I don't think anyone really suspected that he chose the idol from there. You could tell he studied up on season one and he was like, well, Carlos picked this one. So I think I'm going to do this one. And he also was just like walking you through his thought process of why he picked um, the outlast opportunity, the long term. And he got the legacy advantage, which was really fun. Um, I've been loving all of his confessionals, just the way he's analyzing his tribe in the game thus far. I think he's going to do really well. Um, let's just see who he surrounds himself with. I know maybe some people are a little hesitant because of his lie when he came back from the journey. I don't know. I'm curious. What do you guys think? Do you think that was a good lie? I'm like on the fence. I think it was a little weird. I don't think it was a good lie, but his other lies were good. So I'm curious what y'all think uh, about that. Even oh, this is why I voted you out. <laughs> this is this is very reminiscent of the Survivor Worlds Apart, where the white collar tribe that goes they pick like A or B, and they're like, oh, we'll we'll make up a third, more neutral option. Everyone just looks and was like, yeah, you took the idle clue. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of that where you try to toe the line, but like neither answer is great. And like I, I'm better off like if you just said like I opened a box, it was empty, I lost my votes, right, or something like that. 
Yeah, it's interesting because I've, I've we've talked about that. Like, is it good to just be like, hey, I went, I opened the box, it was empty, I've lost my vote, or does that put a target on you? Because now, if you don't have a vote, it's very easy to vote for you, right? Because you don't really have a lot of ammo to fight back, you know. Or claim that you know you had to compete against Sarah and she won the opportunity or something like that. Like, like somehow Sarah yeah. is, and then you can go and try to win an ally, but say, well, actually, here's what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's where I probably would lean, Stephen. Is like, hey, we actually. It was like a duel uh, and like the winner got to go to the opportunity i lost so i'm back right like that kind of that's probably the way i would lean if i were to lie about some of that um i think there's there's certainly opportunities opportunities to uh to, to tell those stories yeah i can cast all my stones from it from the armchair as i watch this and then i go play these games i'd play do the stupidest things that's all i can say <laughs> we've all been there for sure you nailed it you said storyteller i mean Andy is digging himself a hole right now with lies. He's said two lies already in the first two episodes. I'm nervous that it's going to bite him in the butt. Like, and the way that I would analyze Andy from the get would be he's talking too much. He's telling me a lie. Like, if you're coming back and you're just like, boom, 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 this is what happened, bam. He like sits there. He like really tells a story, which I, like, that's what he does. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious to see if he under like switch that off a little bit during the game because I feel like if you continue to tell these long long stories about what happened are you going to be able to understand like oh my god I di really didn't tell them about that and it's going to come up again I don't know good luck to him right now I feel like you're already two lies in two episodes <laughs> you better make sure that your stories stay the same who knows all this rain can make you delirious all these bugs you might be talking to a bug on your shoulder and all of a sudden someone overhears and the game's over for you i guess i appreciate that andy's been playing aggressive i think if you look at the demographic andy's playing in, it tends to be an, e a, an early target so i appreciate him playing aggressive taking advantage of everything i feel bad that of all the advantages he got nothing nothing against the uh, nothing against the um, the legacy advantage but it's an advantage that incentivizes people to betray you so it's very it's not an like easy advantage to win over like hey i have an extra vote we can use this together it's like no i have this like legacy advantage oh if you vote me out i guess we're friends if i don't think it's you you might get it, it it's it, it i wish he had gotten a different advantage out of her pick something more short term that helped him through these opening rounds yeah i was intrigued by his uh philosophy that um if he can't get through the first few stages of the game then like he's done anyway so might as well pick something long term right he's got to rely on his strategy and his strategic or his uh social skills to kind of make this early part work so that was really interesting and i i think for me too you know in those scenarios as a player i'd probably be like hey i i gotta get something now to get uh, there's no guarantee of those days down the road, right? So, like, I'd rather, I'd probably lean more toward short term, even though in my brain I'm more of a long term player. I think there's no guarantee of that long term possibility if you don't have, can't get through the short term. So, it was very interesting to kind of hear how he thought through that. Um, and I thought it was interesting he picked the the odd tribal councils, right? So, 11, 9, and 7, um, which was interesting because I do think, you know, he talks about how those are the flip zones, right? The odd number of people typically are when people will flip and make changes, which I thought was interesting. The only the only caveat, I guess, is like if you pick the evens, you can have it all the way to six versus with the odds, you only get it till seven, right? So it's one more round that you could use it in theory um, by keep by doing the evens. But you get to play it sooner at 11 with the odds. So I, I, that's why I like the odds. Yeah. Yeah, I think, that, and I, you know, pat my bet my myself on the back. Like I liked that twist of it. Like I like people making those choices right um and kind of the thoughts behind those those choices i i liked kind of throwing that twist in to see what people would do with it um but yeah i think and i also think andy is a producer for survival challenge so he for the last 10 years has been sitting on the other side of the camera he's been the one asking the questions analyzing the gameplay of players right so um i think he's so ingrained in these games and how people play and like right he's he's both a storyteller and i think like so, has so much just like knowledge right that i think um it'll be interesting to see if that helps him or if that hurts him in the long run any other thoughts on andy 
Okay, I just want to quick, you already went, Justin, would you go short term or long term for this advantage, like doing that last opportunity? Can we quick just fire? I'm curious to see what people say. I'd go short term too. I would have gone long term and I would have definitely chose flip zones. The odds. Ooh. Dang, Jazzy. Jazzy I mean, loves a good flip. Yeah. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> Gosh. Um, I mean, on our season, it was only three. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I mean, if this was my first time ever playing, I probably would have gone short. Um, I don't think I would have gone with the same like perspective of like, okay, this is outlast. I should hit outlast. Um, I don't know which one I would have hit, but I probably would have gone short. I would have gone short as well. Well, there it is. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, yeah. I have one thing to say about Andy. Oh, okay. Just real quick. Because yeah. Then, um, I think most of you guys covered everything I was going to say. The last thing I was going to bring up was exactly what you said, Justin, that you can tell that he's seen so many Survivor LRG scenarios play out that he's like so many steps ahead. Um, he seemed kind of hesitant to emerge like as a leader. Like it was like, oh, do you guys want to do this or this? We could do this. It, it kind of had Sarah energy where it's like, oh, these are the experienced players. So I'm excited to watch him play. I really like Andy um, and I like what he's done so far. And I'm hoping for some chaos. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'll also just quickly mention, I almost forgot, but I'm glad we paused. Um, we'll, we can analyze this at the end. Um, he's one of the balls, balls, balls for that couldn't really get that first part of the challenge moving, right? So he's part of that four. We'll talk about all four of them. Um, and I'll get your predictions on if you think that'll impact um, the first tribal or not. Um, all right, so we've got, next up is Chelsea. She's 35 from New York. She uh, works in digital engagement. Um, and she played Survivor Angelica, I believe is 2021. I hope I got that right. And then Adventure Cocapelli Legends with me. Um, and last season's Taylor, uh, Taylor Clark um, and Chelsea were partners in that Cocapelli Legends game. Um, so they had played Angelica together and then came to Cocapelli um, as, a, as a duo. Um, and like my, uh, Chelsea's playing with Chelsea, like she's just a phenomenal player. Um, so I was super excited that she opted to play. And I will say both in Angelica, she had, was playing with her then boyfriend. Um, and in Cocapelli, she had Taylor as her duo. So both games she went in with kind of a duo, right? And she wasn't really able to play her own game. So I was really excited to get her to come play out last kind of on her own. No, no kind of like no attachments to her. So she could really just play her own game. So that was great. Anybody want to kick off with Chelsea? These little intros you you give give me a lot of insight into these people. Like I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense about their play because she seems. I've used this word with a few people, hesitant a little bit, and I wonder if that's because she's only played games with somebody that she knows um, is going to have her back or assumes has her back. Um, she seems quiet so far. It was cool to see her searching with the clue and. Um, you know, she chose to share it, something I would never do, but good for her. And, and hopefully she gains some trust. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, she grabs it right in front of everybody, right? So, um, you know, there's four of them there. Do you try to sneakily grab it, put it in your pocket and walk away? Um, or do you watch to see who else grabs it? Do you try to find a quiet moment alone? Um, you know, that's that's hard. It's hard when... You don't do it like Rachel, where you can grab it off the box kind of discreetly, and it's really just there in front of everybody sitting in your living room, um, you know, waiting to be grabbed. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting um, to see how that went down. Any other thoughts on Chelsea? Going off of that, Justin, so for the individuals that watched season one, why wouldn't you look at the box from the jump? Like, if that was there on season at least look, like, make sure it's like possibly there i mean the way that i grabbed it i just put my like foot up there act like i was stretching and i just ripped it and threw it into my sock yeah. either way um she's two part clues, of right? two clues two clues to the same idol did you find it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i made a rub it in thank you um but 
she's part of the four that visibly throw the challenge for this tribe um which i thought was very strategic like you look at the numbers you're like okay like four can do a little more work than three obviously um but i like i felt like when she talked to um oh gosh matt the australian was like okay like should we throw this type situation um found the clue shared it with a team would never do that ever unless someone was visibly looking at me pulling it off so i don't know if that was happening if it was kudos to her just being like hey found this let's let's read it all together um there's one quote that she said i feel like it was from when everyone came back or you you came back with the rewards from um the initial kind of the decision of where we're placing everything and she goes this is all we got i want to be like girlfriend you threw the challenge you're getting flint you have to deal with it you can't sit there and say this is all we got like to me it would be like then okay it sounds great let's go get some wood let's make make a fire she sat there and said this is all we got you did nothing yeah it was interesting because i i was also intrigued by the the idea of throwing the challenge um and as the host like i realized that i think it may be on chelsea eh, it might have been val's toss i can't remember whose toss it was but i was like they're not even trying so there must be something going on here <clears throat> which is interesting because they obviously don't know what's to come but in theory if let's say just all 10 of them make it they get 10 selections on that board they're guaranteed to get more than what they got right so like and they obviously don't know that that's coming they don't know um right but i you know i think you're right nick and that like throwing that gives them less um less people in the mix to make those decisions so they ultimately get less right so i thought that was really interesting um and i think I don't think that was a factor at all on Nebi. So it's interesting that those three kind of bonded over the fact that they didn't do well in the challenge versus the other four bonded over the fact that they opted to throw it so they could have those conversations and like bond at camp, right? And um, do the work or whatever, whatever. Um, so yeah, I thought that was an interesting kind of how the two tribes broke down differently. Um, it was really funny. If, uh, when we first set up the challenge, a little like behind the scenes scoop, but first set up the challenge, I was like, guys, that feels a little close. Like, is it going to be hard enough? Or are we going to end like, is everybody going to end up going on this journey? And they're like, no, it should be fine. Like, we tested it. I don't think everyone's going to go. And then, like, the first four people on Nebby make it. I think Nebby was technically first. I think I might have showed it backwards in the episodes. And I was like, and I literally just looked at Travis and Bobby and I was like, <laughs> and they're like, it's going to be fine. And it actually worked out perfectly. So, like, um, they know what they're doing and I need to trust the process and trust them. Like it actually worked out perfectly, right? Like um, they were almost the same amount of people went on both and it allowed, because it was kind of easy, it actually allowed people to throw it on purpose to make those decisions that they make, right? So I actually kind of liked that it worked out that way. So it all works, uh, it all works out in the end. Um, any other thoughts on Chelsea? Uh, Jazzy mentioned her being hesitant, which, you know, I do agree with, but wasn't she the one that called out Trey when she was like, wait, but this person already said they got the tribe advantage. You can get it twice, um, which I kind of liked her for that. She kind of stirred the pot without putting any heat on herself. Um, so when they go into this first tribal, I don't think anyone's going to be thinking about Chelsea. So I think she does have the ability to kind of like hang back in the background, analyze, gather her people. But I do like that she did that and kind of put the heat on Trey right away. And I liked how she interacted with, was it Amelia during the carrot in a box? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know, that was fun. You get to see a little sassy side of her and analytical side of her as well. So yeah, yeah. she'll be a fun player to watch. Yeah, we talked about that on the Amelia side, but we hadn't yet on Chelsea's. I loved that dynamic. Like, again, I think Amelia showed a little bit of her sassy personality and Chelsea was just like drilling with questions, right? Where, um, you know, we, every pair did it a little bit differently, but Chelsea was just like, bam, bam, rapid fire questions. And Amelia was willing to engage, which I thought was really fun. Um, and yeah, I'm glad you called that out because I, I did find that clip really interesting where, you know, Trey comes back and Chelsea has no qualms being like, wait a second, right? And like, I don't think she did it in a super accusatory way. I don't think she like called it out, called it out, but I think she made sure everybody heard it, right? And everybody kind of was there to talk about it. So I thought that was interesting. Any other Chelsea thoughts? All right, all right. Let's see how Chelsea does. Up next, we have Kira. That's how you say it, Kira. Even though it's, uh, I, I was nervous every time I went to say it. Um, 
Kiera from 26 from North Carolina, currently unemployed, but I think she has now moved and found a job since uh, the game, which is exciting. And she did play Survive Season 2, which was, I think their theme was called Roundup um, when I looked it up. Um, <clears throat> and so she's got a little bit of experience. And uh, that is kind of all the context I think I have to give. Thoughts on Kira? Who wants to go first? My quote I wrote was, she got the sauce, okay? I really love her. She is my girl, a short queen. How tall, is she taller than me? Is she like five foot or lower? What do we think? It's funny, like, it's funny you say that because she reminds me a little bit of you just in like height. It's and you, energy. it's you, this is all you. <laughs> oh my God. It's yeah. the hat. Very the similar hat. The hats. Like, yeah, there's a definite, like a little bit of a Nicole vibe. She's, she's chill, but still has spunk and energy. Like she's got that good mix. Um, yeah, I don't, I can't, I can't, I don't know where we'd fit on the height scale between the two of you. I think it'd be probably pretty close. I love, yeah, I love her. Um, she, I like that she called out, you know, sometimes my personality is really bold and a lot. So I'm going to make sure to just kind of tune it down. She seems like she's kind of a connector. So someone that really connects with people no matter who they are. And yeah, she's very chill. She's likable. So hopefully she can use that kind of aura around her and start to connect with people and you know find her ride or die um i'm excited to see what she does she seems athletic she seems smart um i'm rooting for my short queen nicole i thought this was season two of you from <laughs> <laughs> i was like yes first of all i died when she gave her herself a like fake high five because no oh one's high fiving her. Like that to me was like, <laughs> love this girl. Um, so Mike from season one um, was there. Uh, he did a lot of filming and he actually, since the episodes, he's been making like little gifts and he made a little gif of her high fiving herself and sent it to me and I sent it to her. And it's like, it's the best moment. I didn't even notice it until he sent me the gif. I was like, oh my God, that did happen. It's so funny. I'm glad you cried. I like, replayed that three times. I was like, she's oh a gem. Of course, she got into a tough situation and that challenge of like the balance beam portion. Like she had to rush to even like potentially even catch up. Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, I do want to call out. Didn't she flip the coin to the wrong color? <laughs> she did. Yep. Yeah. Both her and Matt like, ended up doing that. Like, yeah. Get it. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, you're you're running around, adrenaline's pumping. She's probably done it a couple of times, but I love the zoom in on that moment. Unfortunate for that edit for you. Um, but I I see I see her going far. I see connections happening behind the scenes in front of everybody, but like keeping it very similar to like unfortunate to Nicole. Hopefully things work out better for her um, than Nicole, but um, we'll see. Who's to blame for that though? <laughs> I hate <laughs> Nick. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really funny to zoom in on the moments where, you know, you're in this and and hey, shout out like I did for for Hannah and for Rachel, um, Kira stepping up and say, I'll do the brain challenge. I think you even hear her in the background, like I'm more of a sorry, I'll do the brawn challenge. I'm more of a brawn than a brain, right? Um, which is great. Like I love people that that, you know, step up to something like this. Um and, but yeah, it was funny to kind of zoom in on that moment where got the wrong color up. Um, but you know, you're moving fast. It's a, um, it's interesting. I thought it'd be so interesting to think of, there's a minute of time. Every round is a minute, right? What if you just wait until the last 15 seconds and then that's when you do the zoomies, right? Like, um, I wonder if there would have been any difference, like, cause you, you, I think they could have eventually figured out all we need is seven. If we get seven every round, we're going to win the round based on how many are out there. So let's just make sure we let's not expend our energy and use the last 20 seconds, 30 seconds to make sure we have seven and that's all we need. Right. Um, that never happened. But I was, as I was watching the footage back, I was like, you don't really have to run for a full minute. <laughs> like you don't really have to. And they kind of, that's just what, kind of the challenge made that happen but like we don't really have to so it's it's funny um to think about that and they were i mean they were so tired and then 
so funny that they're like dying at the end of that challenge and then the other challenge is like go stand and ask what's in a box <laughs> oh, oh god i love You're it so devious oh god it was so funny um and again it was like everything that mo i wouldn't say everything but most things we try to do in this game are meant to set up certain scenarios and we wanted to create a dynamic right where there's people bonding over an extremely exhausting challenge there's people bonding over that kind of interesting inter-tribe kind of connections um and would there be any kind of hostility or or bad feelings between a group that's exhausted and just killed themselves with a challenge and then lost you know or one uh and then a, t a tribe that went to a challenge that was somewhat not a, you know not exerting at all um and won or lost right like so could those dynamics come into play um yeah we like to set those up those types of scenarios um but uh any other thoughts on kira steven jazzy i, don't know I, I think she's pretty badass i think she's adaptable um male female i think she can fit in with a lot of people um and i think that jeff did so awesome in balls 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 that you didn't notice um how do you pronounce her name kira kira, kira. you didn't notice like how awesome she did she killed that challenge too she just didn't have a lot of opportunity to do it but her balance on those boxes the editing was great um so i think i'm rooting for her too she, i like her a lot awesome all right up next we got jacob jacob is 26 from indiana he is a teacher or was a teacher at the time of the game i think he's also changed jobs since then um and this is his first lrg and one of the things i love is that in his cast photo he sent and his audition video he wore the same outfit that he wore to the game which i just thought was so adorable um and he said he planned it that way so that was funny um so uh thoughts on jacob i feel like we've heard a lot of strategy from jacob like we've seen a lot of his thought process of what he's doing where he's going you know he feels good about trey he's working to try to sneak in one-on-one -on -one conversations we saw him kind of in, in the i think it was the braun group he was like why don't we do a split vote on andy i don't know who the second person is but why don't we try to flush whatever andy has and, and make something happen so he seems i appreciate him because i feel like it is very tempting in these games. I think we're seeing a lot of the Yellow Tribe is they're not making the most of the time they have. I mean, they're very, they're going to Tribal Council. They've lost the challenge. We don't see anyone really do a lot of scrambling. And that might come out in the next episode. But I, I think him being more active and trying to make something happen, I think that's a really smart way to try to capitalize on this time they have. Because it's going to get dark. People are going to bed. And you're going to wake up. And you're not going to have much time in the morning. Yeah, it's interesting. One of my favorite clips um, is like just like a dead silence at camp, and he's then he's like, "Do you guys think Andy has something?" <laughs> it's just it's so funny that like out of nowhere he just asked that question. I just I loved it. Um, yeah. I mean, Stephen, who's going to bed with this this cast? I mean, I'm staying up all night. I want I want to talk to them twenty four seven. Um. Love you. How cold was it when y'all were sleeping out there? Like I heard, because I heard it was pretty rough. I mean, it dropped shape. a little bit, but there was nobody on my tribe I wanted to snuggle with, so it's not like I would do anything. Rude. Um, but he said from the jump, he said, "I'm a relationship cutter," so like he knows what he's getting himself into, um, and I think still like definitely strategic and everything and i think he's like like you said he's like i'm just like drop a few quotes here and there while the tribe is all together um i did like when he was like hey like when you talked to trey um that was a good decision but then he said yeah i told him i would have his back but like in the end like i'll vote him out so like he he definitely thinks there's strategy involved with jacob and not just that smile I mean, he gave Bartley when they shook hands after that um, challenge a little. I don't know if it was an eyebrow, a couple of winks. I don't know if it was a wink. I'd be switching tribes in two seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting the dynamic with Trey, and um, you know, I think he's somewhat in the mix of this discussion of like what actually happened at the outpost and who got what and who made the decisions of what, right? And Trey 
I think fortunate for Jacob, he comes back first and says, here's what I did. Trey comes back the second time. We'll obviously talk about that probably when we get to Trey, but right. And he says, well, I did that. So he's somewhat in the mix of that conversation, but being the first one, at least he's got like that leg up a little bit in that chat, I think. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that, that plays out. Um, any other thoughts on Jacob? Jazzy, I don't remember who said what so far. Did we mention him uh, searching for an idol in the challenge booth? I'm like giving German vibes right here. Yeah, he dug through all, I, and it was a lot of footage. He dug through all of that, all the sleeping materials, um, just to see. Wow. What, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, I think, you know, he he's very, he says in his opening clip, right, he's passionate about the game. I think he, you know, he knows to look for that stuff. So I think that, I thought that was interesting. A lot of people did that. A lot of people, I mean, God, at some point I'm going to have to hide something in the voting booth because everyone looks under that damn, you know, voting blanket, whatever you call it, uh, every time. I, you know, I barely show any of it now because it's just like everyone does it. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. Jazzy, Steven, anybody uh, have anything else? No, nope, good. All right. That is Jacob. Up next, we've got Matt. Matt is from Australia, our international. We're now global, global game. Um, he is 38 from Melbourne. Uh, he is a Godna. Um, and he played Backyard Survivor Redemption Season 4. I think he maybe played some other games too. I tried to look back at his application. I think they might have been online. I couldn't tell if it was online or live games, but he's played a couple games in Australia. Um, this was his first game in the States. I think this might have been his first time to the States. So we were super honored to have him come all the way here. Not just for us. He was here for like two or three weeks, I think, um, traveling around. So, um, but um, I saw Matt. I became a big fan of Backyard Survivor. If you haven't seen it, shout out. They do a great job. Um, definitely watch. Um, and I watched season four. Um, and I just thought he was super fun. Um and there's, I mean, half of that cast, I would love to have them come play. So you're all more than welcome to apply and get over here if you can. Um, and I reached out to Matt and I said, hey, you know, if you're ever interested in our game, we'd love to have you apply. And he did it. And um, we obviously jumped at the chance to cast him. So um, that was really exciting. Um, yeah, those are all the things I have to say to start. Anybody? I loved him in Backyard Survivor. I'm pretty sure I'm going to love him here in Outlast as well. I am very high on that. Very excited to see him play. I we could already talked about how it was unfortunate that he, did that. he was one of the players that had to throw that reward challenge when they really needed to not throw that. But you don't know that at the time, and so I appreciate kind of the thought and the decision making there. And I really, really, really want him to go far. Yeah, actually, I'm curious. Um, Nicole did this before. I'm going to do it now, really fast. So all you know is. If you do well in this challenge, you're going to make a decision. That's all you know. Would it ever? Would any of you say like, I don't want to make a decision this early? Is there anybody here that would be like, I'd throw it. I wouldn't want to make a decision that early in the game. I know Jazzy's a no. I don't even have to ask. <laughs> uh, Jazzy is a full on absolutely not. Like I oh. want, I want to know something. Like, okay, obviously here would game. want to make a decision. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Right. I'm a competitor number one, but number two, information is so key in games. Like, I would totally want to be in on that decision. Yeah, I would be encouraging other people to throw it though, for sure. <laughs> yeah, love it. Um, so yeah, we obviously we saw. So Matt is also a part of the balls, balls, balls four that uh, struggle a little bit uh, and early in that challenge. But any any thoughts on Matt? <laughs> want to dance with the mute button um i like him instantly he gives off a good first impression and of course like the whole lizzie nod on his shirt is just oh, like gosh. so cute and your story is so cute so it's hard to not love him yeah for those that don't know on season one lizzie um who is obviously we all love her to death she had a shirt from waitress uh, with lyrics i think she's messy but she's kind and then you'll see in the episodes, Matt got a shirt made in yellow with a waitress lyric as a nod to Lizzie because he was just so inspired by her story of kind of coming out there and playing and doing something that made her uncomfortable, which was just really sweet. Um, and uh, so we love that. Thanks for bringing that up, Jesse, because I, I, I'm glad we mentioned that. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, Justin. I was going to bring that up as well. Um, I would love to see that be beautiful pie. Like, I would love to see that beautiful pie. Um, visibly throws it, which is unreal. Like, I think, like, the difference between Nebby and Poda on this, like, I think Poda land the throwing part of that initial um, kind of overall decision um, toss. I'm sorry. I'm butchering that for you. Um, That's good. But, like, oi, oi, oi. Like, he's another one. Like, talk to me all day. I just want to listen to that accent. I was fortunate <laughs> enough to live in Australia for six months, and I, like, want to go back now. Um, but, Matt, I'm nervous. I feel like you're Eric point 2.0. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. scared for you. I'm a little scared for you. See, I disagree with you, Nick. I feel like Matt is more like down to earth and less like, I don't know, Eric and his name's Jeff. They're just like so upfront. They know they're cute. They're like, we're going to put it in your face. Where Matt, like he's cute, but he's like, you know, I'm just this down to earth guy. And I just am happy to be here. Like he just seems like he's chill. He's cool, calm, collected. Um, I'm so happy that they did toss it because when he was throwing it, he was throwing it like this. And I was like, Jesus, has this guy never thrown anything in his life? And then he mentioned he threw it. And I was like, okay, thank God. <laughs> like, you had a reason for doing that. Um, I don't know if I agree with the throwing, but at least it kind of gave them a, a moment with those four to talk with each other and kind of gain some trust. Um, yeah, Matt just seems very sweet, down to earth, smart, athletic. but doesn't seem like he's going to come off as a threat right away. So that's going to be really exciting to watch. All right, real He's quick round. Talker. He's a smooth talker. Watch out. Another quick round table question. Would someone traveling from Australia influence your desire or not to vote them out? Would you be like, yeah. I'll put them out first, or I'd want to keep him in the game because he traveled so far? Would it influence <laughs> your ability to vote him out or not? Yes, Stephen, you're saying it would it would influence it. Yeah. Yeah. Nicole, yeah. Jazzy's no. I mean, is, he pay, is he paying for my plane ticket back to Australia? I'll keep him on. But I mean, if it comes down to it, Nick, would you feel at all, any at any guilt for voting out someone that traveled from Australia? Would that influence your? There's no guilt. I voted out Nicole. <laughs> all, right. all right. We're two and two on that. We're split. Um, all right. All right. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't feel any guilt. I mean, I. <sighs> I know every other people would be feeling guilt. So I feel like I'd feel pressured into pretending I was guilty. And so it would depend on how my alliance was, honestly. But I honestly would vote someone out for that. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a factor where like they know what they're signing up for. They know what they're coming here for. Um, and that was one thing I think I, I think I said it to Matt earlier. I was like, hey, like we'd obviously love to have you. But, you know, if you get over here and you're the first one out, like I don't want you to feel like you made a mistake. Right. So just. You know, I'm not going to obviously do anything to try to keep you in the game. So just make sure you know that that risk. And he was, you know, he was very willing to do it no matter what happened. So, um, yeah, I don't know how I would handle that as a as a player. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to experience that because um, I thought like if I ever play again, like maybe I'd go to Australia and play there because no one would know who I am. Um, but like, would they vote out the American? Would they vote him, vote him out early? Maybe they would, um, but then they're like we, we've all said, right? Like, there's a charm about Matt, and so that is a threat, right? So, like, you know, even just the accent alone kind of becomes a factor of his threat level because he is charming, and you know, um, the accent adds adds to that. Um, any other thoughts on Matt? Awesome. We'll keep going. We're almost done. You guys are all so amazing for being here so long. Um, all right. Up next, we have Maya. She's 22. I believe she's our youngest player in the game from Massachusetts. Uh, she works in political campaigns and she did play Survivor Northeastern. So she's got a little bit of experience. That's a college game that's very well known here in the Boston area. Um, uh, and I believe they play like they, it's a semester long, like you play all semester long. Um, I don't really know the dynamics of it and like how challenges and vote outs or anything work, but it's like a very long, long game. Um, thoughts on Maya? Silent attacker. She 
I feel from the jump is gonna like kind of I wouldn't say flat line, but just be very stagnant and all of a sudden it's just gonna come see like episode whatever it is is just gonna be like the Maya show and she's just gonna take it over. But right now, I don't have any notes on my page for her, so she's gonna have some work to do. I think she said she memorized instant insanity, that puzzle. Which is actually a, a little bit more of a challenging puzzle to memorize than to expect because, like, it kind of like you go to the Wikipedia page, it just dives in the graph theory, and my eyes just glaze over. And so I was impressed to hear that she put the time into learning that puzzle for this game. Yeah, I, all I know is like the first. So it's the it's it's the jazzy puzzle, if we're being honest, right? So uh, from season one, the four blocks um, four block puzzle is is instant insanity. Um, and all I know is like the first two blocks. I think that's what Jazzy, you were trying to explain to your tribe, right? It's like, there is a way to kind of configure the first two blocks. I don't know if there's really a way to memorize the next two blocks, but once you get the first two, it's then a lot of trial and error on the other two box, boxes. Um, but yeah, her, her obviously seeing that in the first season, memorizing it, expecting it to come back in this season, I think is a sign that she's, you know, she's doing the, the prep. Um, to to play well, I you know we were instantly impressed by her her audition uh, video, her application video, um, and I think you hit on the head, Nick. Like she's got like a silent but deadly type quality to her that um, that was very evident from the from the get go. And her interrogation on the carrot box, I loved. She was one of my favorite interrogations. Uh, she's winter energy to me. Immediate when I saw her, I was like, oh, I like her. She's she seems she seems like she can have a controlled kind of way about her and keep things controlled. Unlike me, like she doesn't seem that chaotic. She seems like she will be controlled. And I like that. Yeah. She seems very calculated. I also don't have a lot of notes about her, but I did say you don't want to get on her bad side. I feel like she works in politics so she can persuade people easy or easier than I probably would be able to. We saw she interrogated who did who was her carrot in the box person? Bag. Yeah. Oh yeah. And she was just like so stuck on it. So yeah, I also agree. She's probably silent but deadly, but she wants to kind of be in the background, not want to ruffle feathers. I don't know. I'm excited to see what Maya does. As of as of now, I don't. Yeah, I just don't know what to expect from her. I feel like she is the Olivia Pope of Outlast right now, if you've ever seen Scandal. I love that. She All is right. super regal. She's just like uh, powerful. Yeah, love it. I will say her parents came to the premiere party and they were so adorable and they like competed in a challenge and it was the cutest. Um, all right. Any other thoughts on Maya? Get into the back end of it up next we have stephanie she's 35 from massachusetts she is a teacher or she would say a teacher uh and uh she played surviving Maine. we actually played surviving Maine together she was my number one um we were a good fun little duo until we got whopped um so uh i was super excited that she was uh applying to come play with play out last um she's a firecracker for sure for sure for sure um Thoughts on Stephanie? Does she have the best shirt of the cast? Because she's the Taylor, she's the Taylor Swift shirt, right? It's I think that's the, well, think that's the shirt, best. Yeah. yeah, and it's yellow, so she did her she did her <laughs> she did her job. Um, yeah, 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 and it obviously inspires the the moment with Peter and the care in the box, the T Swift moment. Um, yeah, thoughts. She's spunky. She's smart. Like I love watching her. I loved watching her in Surviving Maine, um, season three. So when I heard she was cast for Outlaws, I was super excited because she's she's really smart and really likable. Um, I'm excited to see if she can keep her excitement under wraps a little bit and not be like deemed a threat because um, she's so adaptable. So we'll see. I love her Taylor Swift shirt as well. Stephanie, how much hairspray did you need for this photo? Um, that shit is standing up straight. Anyways, she's coming in hot. She is giving energy. Um, she even calls out and understands what happened in season one. Like, she knows 
women were kicked off one by one by one from the jump. I mean, I was not involved in that. So <laughs> anyways, um, but she also says like, she sits back at camp after everyone comes back and like, she's the first one to be like, didn't they just say that they put down for the same thing? She's like, I wanted to keep quiet. Didn't want to say anything. I would have went off and would have said, you're a liar, you're a liar. And you're probably a liar too, but kudos for her. I mean, she, she's kind of keeping, like Jazzy said, it looks like she's kind of keeping the energy a, a little under wraps. Um, hopefully she keeps it even further as the game goes on, because obviously as the game goes on, it gets a little tougher. Yeah, I'm super proud of that. And kind of referring to what you said, Nick, is, is one of her biggest challenges in surviving Maine was she was very vocal. She was very out there. She she was deemed a threat very early just because of her energy, her vibes, her kind of leadership qualities. And so I appreciated and I was excited to see that she was trying to tone it back. She was being self-aware and trying to reel it in a bit. I love the confessional where she's like, I'm just boiling and I want to say something, but I'm not right like that. I, you know, I was really proud of her that she kind of took that step in her game to be like, I know I've got to reel that in if I have any chance of mitigating that. Right. Um, so yeah, it's fun to see, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to see how that does for her. And it's fun to kind of see the confessionals where we get to see some of that stuff that she's not going to do kind of to in front of her tribe. So I thought, I thought that was really a fun moment. Everyone here would be lying if they said they weren't excited to see more Stephanie confessionals. She's about to give us so much confessional gold. I love it. I love her. Um, yeah, what you said was so much fun. She, You could see it. Or she's like, oh, my God, I'm so angry, but I can't do anything about it. So I really hope she kind of sticks to that and sticks to holding her tongue and just giving us everything in those confessionals. And we also see, too, that before they made their decisions, she was the one that kind of led that conversation of, okay, what kind of things, what kind of items should we look for? What should we get? So she is really thinking about the game um, and kind of being that leader, but that leader that's behind the scenes. Um, yeah, she I, also I really says, like, like, what if there's an advantage, right? Like she does, she brings it up to that whole group, yeah. right? So kind of again, tosses it out there. Um, so I thought, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Sorry, Nicole. I no, think. you're good. You're good. That's totally agree with that. Yeah, I think she's going to go far. I have high hopes for Stephanie. All right. Any other thoughts on Stephanie? No, good, good, good. Two more to go. Next up, we have Tremern. People call him Trey. Um, so Trey Tremern, he's 28 from Connecticut. He's a doctor. Um, and he played Survivor Roy Zan, uh, in 2021. That's actually how I um, know of him. Um, and that in that game, he was super scrappy and like finding idols and doing all these crazy things. Um, so uh, he definitely has a, has a scrappy quality to him. Um, and we've talked a couple about a couple things. He's, you know, he's had some interesting opening moments with the the box situation and what he's kind of said to his tribe. Um, and he was also a part of that balls, balls, balls group of four that struggled in the beginning of the challenge. So um, thoughts on Trey. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna kick this off. <laughs> Come on, Trey, what are you doing? Like, pick something else on that effing table besides being like, oh, another advantage. Like, there's multiple other things that you could have said. You're coming back to tribal, and you're gonna say another advantage. You are. I would have been like, he's gone. He's got to go. He's got to go now. That was probably the worst mistake I've ever seen so early in a game hmm. but who knows maybe he can like stick with jacob in his alliance and jacob can kind of save him in this moment because i don't like i don't think that that's that's not a savable moment you 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 got to pick something else wasn't he the last one uh i think so yeah yeah oh uh, save rope no one picked rope. Like no one picked. Like say something random. Say rope. <laughs> I love that. I, I mean, unlike Andy, I, his advantage isn't threatening, right? Because he has to he has to give up a vote twice to get two extra votes, and so I think if push, he could share that and try to use it. Say, hey, you know, like 
if you work with me, I can make my vote here and I, we can, I can help you later on. I think he has outs to work with this, that he's not doomed because he told a really bad lie. It may still doom him, right? And may, we may see a, a split on him and Andy, but I don't know. It's so funny that Peter is 23 and he's 28 because I would have like reversed it. I thought he was like such a baby. So sorry, Trey. <laughs> um, yeah, Trey is like, he's scrappy. You got it right on the head. If you think about that brawn challenge, like this man was like full on tackling people and he was like clawing at people to like flip that coin. Um, he's interesting. I'm very interested to see how he digs himself out of this hole because so many people, um, Andy, I keep messing it. Is it Sierra or uh, Kira? Kira, yeah. Kira. Andy, Kira, Stephanie, Val were all like, mm, this guy was lying. So let's see how he maneuvers out of this. Yeah. And it's interesting because when he does the, oh, I took the advantage. I, I can't tell from the clip if he was saying, I did the team advantage like Jacob just said he did, or he just said, I got the advantage. He didn't say if it was team or individual. He just kind of put out, I did the advantage. And I, there's no footage that I could find of him clarifying what he meant by that. So, um, you know, I think the story just starts to get away from him of like people are like, well, could could things go back into the mix? Do you think production like added things in there twice? Like it kind of unravels. And I'm curious, you know, there's not a ton of footage of him trying to explain it away or, or um, yeah, so I, I don't know, um, you know, how much, yeah, how much that story impacts the larger, the larger picture, but. Justin, I have a question. Yeah. If I, so if I was him and I want to claim, I, let's say, take something small, could you hide an item like in a tarp or would production unhide it and make it, make it so people can see all the items or can you pretend you took something else by hiding it? Would you have allowed that? Um, we, so in theory they were not to touch they were not to touch any of the items okay. they were to touch the wood. rules <laughs> but then people started touching all the items and we didn't really stop them like jacob digging through the sleeping stuff so like i don't think we would allow them to like hide stuff i think they would have the ability to pick one item and then everything resets um that item goes away everything else would reset to its normal kind of stations i don't think we would have allowed hiding but it didn't come up so it's a good, it's a good flag. Steven's finding ways to break my game. Great. Um, any other thoughts on Trey? The sticky situation. We'll see how he goes from here. Sorry, go ahead, Steve. Does he like cows? I don't know. I find I find this of all the of, because I assume you gave players instructions take a photo with you next to nature or something like that because most people are like having some sort of greenery background and we have a tree and cows and I'm just like I, I'm just so curious about the thought process of choosing this corner of the photo. Yeah, I mean in his opening video, right, is like I'm gonna win because I'm gonna try really really hard, right? Like he's kind of just quirky and like you know that's I actually that's one of the things I love about him is he's just like a little little quirky. Um, so I actually think this picture is like a perfect representation. Um, you know, I, I like that. Um, it's so funny for like, I'm wondering if like, if I walked in and he was my doctor, like what I would, you know, <laughs> he's such like a, he does, he has like a boyish face. Like, if, if, um, you know, I don't know what he's a doctor of specifically. So, um, I mean, as a doctor, uh, don't you know, never put your feet out for free. Like he's literally showing his feet for free. That's fair. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, and I, I was glad to have a doctor on the, on the cast though, just in case we did have some injuries, um, more to come on that. Um, so who knows what will happen? Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it's good. We've obviously has, have Angela as our, our medical staff on site, but, uh, having another doctor around was not, not great. It uh, was great. I should say, um, all right, and last but not least, we've got Valerie, or people just call her Val. She is 43 from Massachusetts. She's a design consultant, and this is her first LRG. She's played a bunch of ORGs, um, but this is her first LRG. Um, and she was also a part of the Balls, Balls, Balls group of four uh, that struggled in the opening challenge. And she, she's the other one that's kind of talked pretty actively about the idle clue that Chelsea found. Um, kind of amongst that group. Thoughts on Val. Who I think Val is playing this game right now 
very well. Um, I think she is a threat from the jump. I think she know like truly knows and understands the game. Um, visibly throws obviously that first reward um, challenge and very detail oriented. I do want to call out to her video. So she has like the video of, I think it's the, um, it's a dog behind her, but where her head is positioned, it cuts off half of the dog and it definitely looks phallic-y. So we're just going to talk about Val, like maybe we just need to connect with her on just like position of cameras in the future. But I think, I think Val has a future um, for sure in LRGs. Any other thoughts? I, I appreciate sure to talk about, you know, at this point, she's like, everyone's a threat to me. And I, and I think I think that's a very appropriate way to kind of view the game and just kind of not, not underestimate anyone. So I think that's a good mindset that we're starting the game off with. And team Val, I love Val. I think, you know, it's like, um, rooting for the home team or something with Val on um, I think I, she's like the queen of resting bitch face and I wonder if people are gonna find her intimidating because of that um but she's super warm and I th looks like she's making alliances and getting in there with people so I'm excited to watch her play I'm very excited for Val as well <laughs> um yeah, she's very likable. She's smart. She's really good at connecting with people, especially one on one. <clears throat> Maybe not really in group settings. I mean, she's fun in group settings too, but especially when you get with her one on one, you're like, oh my gosh, I love this person. So I think she'll be developing a lot of deep connections with people. Um, yeah, she she's also a dark horse in this game. Don't underestimate Val. Yeah, I think both her and Maya had, I think, similar kind of intro videos where they're both like, silent threats like people aren't going to see us coming um so it was interesting that they just happened to end up on the same tribe because i thought they had kind of similar mindsets going in of like people aren't going to know that i'm a threat until it's kind of too late right so um yeah yeah um all right so now we can we can we can uh ask the question balls 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 you got those four people on that starting who who's to blame who do you who do you pin the blame on? Can you pin the blame on that one? That was so bad, so hard to watch. Oh my god! I mean, it took me so long. Like I'm thinking when oh, Jazzy was like, I was throwing anything and everything at my TV. I was like, switch it up. Someone's got to move. Someone's like, and then all of a sudden Andy said it. But I want to be like Andy, you're the one walking back. You should be the one walking forward. Like. If you think that you are able to do that, like you should have been that way. Like I got so angry. Yeah. So angry. Well, and I guess another the other, maybe the better question is do, uh, editing. Do you, I don't know. Do you think that that performance, one of those four, because they are to blame in theory, right? Do you think one of those four are most at risk as they head to tribal council? Or do you think because there's so much time between that challenge, there's four other challenges, there's a bunch of other things that happen, like there's 24 hours of time. Um, there's a lot of relationship building. Do you think that first challenge and that performance will have an impact on the vote? Those names stick. Those names will stick. And as challenges go on, maybe some names drop off. But those four definitely have to be the top four. Anybody else have a different theory? I think because we've had two reward challenges, we, we, we've, we've had at least one outpost, who knows what else will happen before we get to that first vote. I think there's enough shuffling going around that people may be more concerned about who has what, who's lying versus just sheer challenge strength. And I think the, I think the unfortunate is Andy is gonna be the crosshairs given he kind of lines up like, well, he was part of the, the, this group for the first challenge and he went to the, um, outposts and we're not quite sure he's telling us the truth to begin with and so i think i think it's be a really if he can get through the next round or two i'll be very impressed yeah totally agree with steven i mean there's so much that's going on right now and they have a whole night to think about it um 
I think it's going to be very, very messy, this first tribal. Everyone's name's going to be thrown out there. I don't think Andy's safe. I don't think Trey is safe. I don't think those four in the challenge are safe. But I wouldn't just say, oh, those four were to blame. They're going to be the names on the chopping block. I think a lot of people are going to have names thrown out there. All right. So this is our Nebby Tribe. We'll do another round table of a round of the table of like who's your favorite to watch right now. Not favorite to watch, but who's who who's like the one you're you're maybe rooting for. We won't talk about winner picks just yet, but who's like the one that stands out for you? We'll go backwards this time. We'll do Nicole first. Come on, Stephanie. Like once again, confessional gold. Love me some Stephanie. Jazzy. I gotta go with Andy. Okay, all right, Nick. Jazzy, Andy in this photo makes me giggle. <laughs> Look I at him know, him. that's why I'm picking him. Um, no. I got to go with my Nicole 2.0. I think Kiara has an opportunity to really drive this forward. Like, I feel like she can dominate, but also give, like, her personality to a lot of people. All right, Steven. I'm watching for Trey. I think he has a lot of decisions he's been making in the near future, and I'm very curious of what he's going to do. All right. Good stuff. Okay. So we're now going to do winner picks. We didn't do who we didn't want. Didn't we do that on the last people? Did we? Who you didn't want? What do you mean? Didn't we do like you who had we targeted? first boot last time, but I'm okay not doing that. Oh, okay. First boot, not for Nebby, though. No. No, no. <laughs> I don't know. We'll edit that part out. Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, all right. Winner picks. It's probably hard to tell with these these photos. Um, but who is your winner pick? Who wants to start us off? I, I won't call someone out. Steven starting us off. I'll go Alex. Alex. I'll, is... Alex from, from, from the photo tribe. I, I, think, I think he'll surprise us. Okay. Nicole or Jazzy? I'm going with I'm going with Maya. Maya. She's giving right. me the vibes. All right. Nicole. Reigning champion Nick wants to be last. So we'll <laughs> we'll let it be last. I'm so stressed because I have like three people that are gonna do great. But my gut is telling me that my girl. Oh gosh, I don't want to Rachel. Rachel's going to take home the gold. She's my girl. All right. Nikki. Now we're going to do this kind of color coordinated. Since I have the three buffs from last time, let me just put on a show for you. So from Nebby, which is blue, but here's purple from last season. Um, I'm going with Rachel. And then from Poda, which is kind of yellow but this is orange from last last season by the way i have all three buffs so you know i'm a champ um i'm going maya okay and then we're gonna end this i think maya takes 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 the champ and she goes full all in outlast champion season two all right all right so those are our winner picks steven's got alex rachel uh, nicole has rachel jazzy and nick have maya Let's see how it works. Can I just say, Stephen had the winner pick last year on the season one cast assessment. So Stephen, Stephen had I it. Really? I know. Yes. Oh, I, I don't remember that at all. Great. Wow. Stephen, what did you see, before. Nick? I mean, come on. I would <laughs> not take that. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess we got to take we, we got to take this to a date, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> In San Antonio, <laughs> not Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. I want to thank uh, Stephen, Nick, Jazzy, Nicole for joining us for the last little two hours um, plus um, doing the cash assessment. One more shout out for uh, applications being open for season three. Uh, check us out on Facebook um, to find the link. Uh, they're open until February 17th. We'd love to have as many, many people apply as possible. Obviously, 
we can only cast a certain amount of people. Um, but the widest nets that we cast, the biggest pools we have, the more that we can put together the game that we want, which is a game truly full of strangers with no connection. So that's our, our ultimate goal here. Um, and we obviously strive for as much diversity as possible. And obviously diversity of race and ethnicity is important, but we also want different body types abilities and disabilities on our first season we had someone with hearing uh with hearing aids hearing loss um we want people of all types backgrounds walks of life um we see diversity in all all capacities so we want as many many people as possible to apply so please do apply um and if you want to catch episodes you can check them out on our youtube channel uh youtube.com slash at outlast lrg so first two episodes of season two are up um, we've got over a thousand views on the premiere, which is super exciting. Um, and you can also catch season one with all these beautiful people on there. Um, uh, most episodes have close to a thousand views. So we've got a, a beautiful fan base. We appreciate all of you that have watched and continue to support. Um, <clears throat> and I think that's the end of my slideshow. So um, check us out on YouTube, watch our episodes. Next episode will be this Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern um, on our YouTube channel. And they'll be going every Sunday for the foreseeable future um, as we play out the season. Um, lots of good stuff to come. So we hope that you'll watch. Um, once again, thank you all so much for being a part of the panel, part of the cast assessment. Um, and we will see you for a mid game cast assessment uh, in a few weeks, whenever that middle of the game is. Um, and with that, we will say good night. Follow me on social media, past champion at the Holy McGrail, Instagram, maybe OnlyFans. Who knows? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm stopping there. Yeah, oh no.